its brief history, the Sky Dome has hosted some major events, and today it is host to what is often called Canada's number one event. There are 55,000 fans on hand here, and millions more joining us for the television broadcast. We welcome you all to CBC's telecast of the 77th Grey Cup game. If this season had unfolded as many thought it would, then neither Saskatchewan nor Hamilton would be here to contest this Grey Cup. But last week, when Saskatchewan did the unthinkable and dispatched the all-powerful Edmonton Eskimos, the stage was set for a Grey Cup matching two teams steeped in tradition. A Grey Cup offering all sorts of potential. And to discuss some of it, let's go to the broadcast booth and join Don Whitman and Ron Lancaster. And Scott, the first order of business, congratulations Mr. Lancaster on being selected by the fans as the number one player of all time. You know, in any championship game, Ron, no position evokes more discussion than that of quarterback. This year is no exception. There was some debate as to who should be the starting quarterback for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, particularly when you have two capable of starting. Very capable quarterbacks. Kent Austin will be the starter. I don't think it was ever in doubt. The reason? He's an excellent starter. Burgess is better coming off the bench. They both can throw the football, and their statistics prove it. Well, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders during much of the season had a problem keeping their receivers healthy. I think they're coming into this game with what they consider their number one receiving core. They finally got everybody back. Ray Elgard is a position. He's a possession receiver. But these are the guys with the speed. Jeff Fairholm, if he gets the ball one-on-one, -on -one, he's a threat to go to distance. And Don Narcisse has had a year that I don't think anybody ever thought he was capable of having. But he's playing with the confidence now, and that's what makes him even better. The Hamilton Tiger Cats, when they think about the Saskatchewan running game, will concentrate naturally on Tim McRae. But he's not only a threat as a runner, he was their second leading pass receiver. An excellent pass receiver. One-on-one, -on -one, he can outrun the linebackers. But Tim McRae ran for 120 yards this year against Hamilton, and he rushed for an average of about 5.6. This is what he does best. Once he turns up field, he knows where he's going, and he's very, very tough to bring down. In winning the Western final against the Edmonton Eskimos last week, the Rough Riders had tremendous success blitzing Tracy Ham. They led the league this year in quarterback sacks. Will they blitz today? Oh, they've got to blitz today. But if you're going to blitz against Hamilton, you better get inside pressure. That means Gary Lewis and Klingbell have got to go inside, and especially Lewis. The outside, they'll get Suter up there, and they'll get Eddie Lowe up there, but they've got to get the Kerrigan because he'll get rid of it in a hurry. Now, when you talk about the Saskatchewan Rough Rider offense, an offense that is capable of scoring a lot of points, is there any one play that they like? There sure is. Throw downtown on Hamilton in man coverage, and this is what they love. Jim Rockford's a safety number six. He's back there for one reason. Anybody goes deep, he's going to try to help them. So we're going to send the wide receiver to the post. That will take the corner. Now Jeff Fairholm, number 18, will go down. He will go to the sideline, and he will go deep. Throw it downtown, keep Rockford occupied, you got a chance to win. And I'm sure both coaches, John Gregory and Al Bruno, are aware of that play and are thinking about it as they congratulate each other prior to heading to the dressing room and coming out on the field for the start of the game. Welcome back to the Sky Dome in Toronto and Grey Cup 89 on CBC Television. The Hamilton Tiger Cats kept the media and many of their fans in suspense much of the week. It wasn't until Thursday that Al Bruno confirmed that Mike Kerrigan would be his starting quarterback. Uh, he may have fooled them, but I, we knew he was going to start, Don. He is a starter. He gets rid of the football in a hurry. He threw for seven touchdowns this year against Saskatchewan. He gets back, he reads quick, and he throws it. If you're going to blitz him, now you contend with Tony Champion, who had club records in receiving yardage and touchdowns. They are a heck of a combination. Kerrigan finished off the game in the 14-10 triumph in the Eastern Final over Winnipeg last week. Todd Dillon was the starter, perhaps prompting the decision by Bruno, the fact that Dillon had been sick much of the week. Yeah, he has, but I think the move was right. Todd Dillon is a better quarterback coming off the bench. The reason he's better, he, he is maneuver. He can maneuver with the football. He can avoid trouble. He can run. And when he can get the defense guessing with him, run or pass, he's more dangerous than Kerrigan coming off the bench. In some ways, the offenses are similar. Saskatchewan likes to throw to their running back. Hamilton likes to throw to Derek McAdoo. 
if they play the zone defense, McAdoo will get a lot of catches today. But the big thing they got from him this year, they did get a running game, and this is what they went into the season wanting. Derek McAdoo at 200 pounds, only 5'10", built close to the ground. He's a very tough individual to bring down. In fact, he goes looking sometimes for defensive backs. Maybe a little crazy. You can't talk about Hamilton defensively without mentioning the names Grover Covington and Mike Walker. They've played together so long they're like brothers. They know every move that each other's going to make, and it really complements them. Mike Walker only has eight sacks, but if you talk to the coaches in the league, he may be the best defensive tackle and defensive lineman. But as a result of that, Grover Covington gets single blocking outside, and with his speed, he's the leading sacker in the CFL. The Hamilton Tiger Cats this year had the best record in club history. Is there any one play that contributed to that success? Mike Kerrigan likes to throw the ball quick. Three-step drop, get rid of it. They'll bring Glenn Suter up sometime to that B, that linebacker position, and they will blitz him. When he blitzes, that slot back will go immediately to the flat to pull the halfback. When the halfback leaves, Tony Champion four downs up, slant to the post, get it in his hands. It's a big, big play for them. Both teams are capable of scoring a lot of points, and we look for a high-scoring Grey Cup game this afternoon here at the Sky Dome in Toronto. Scott? So, Don, as we said, a game with potential. Can you take Tony Champion out of it? Can you shut down Don Narcisse? Questions to which we'll have the answers in the course of the next three hours. Stay with us. We have about 70 minutes to go before kickoff. This is Foster's Grey Cup on CBC. A uh, capacity crowd settling into the Sky Dome here in Toronto. This is one noisy facility today. And now we have a chance to reintroduce you to our game day experts, all-star linebacker from the Argos, Don Moan, and Matt Dunnigan, the starting quarterback from the BC Lions. You guys were both in this situation a couple of years ago. Matt, you as recently as last year in the dressing room collecting your thoughts with minutes to go before kickoff. What were your thoughts, Don? You're extremely nervous. You cannot wait for this game to get underway. You've played all year to get here. It's come down to this moment. Let's get this thing going. All right, let's see your Grey Cup ring, Matt. This is what it's all about. And you said at this time last year when you played in the Grey Cup game in Ottawa, you were in the room taking deep breaths. That's right. Uh, no matter how many times you play in this event, uh, you're going to be nervous. I was talking to the referees beforehand. They're even nervous. So everybody involved with this uh, spectacular occasion is just is nervous, a little uptight, but it should be a lot of fun. We remind people that you two guys played in what was considered to be the greatest Grey Cup game ever played in 1987 at BC Place in Vancouver. Interesting to see if this one measures up. Let's go now to the player introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, football fans, mesdames et messieurs, amateurs de football, at this time we would like to introduce today's starting lineups for the 77th Grey Cup game. Nous voulons maintenant vous présenter les alignements partants de ce 77e match de la Coupe Grey. D'abord avec l'unité défensive des champions de l'Ouest. Beginning with the defensive unit of the Western champion Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Defensive end, number 70, le numéro 70, Elier, Vince Goldsmith. Defensive tackle, plaqueur, numéro 99, number 99, Chuck King Bear. <laughs> Defensive tackle, Blecker, numéro 79, number 79, Gary Lewis. <laughs> Defensive end, allié défensif, numéro 71, number 71, Bobby Jurison. Linebacker, secondeur, numéro 74, number 74, Dan Razovich. Linebacker, secondeur, numéro 39, number 39, Dave Albright. Linebacker, secondeur, numéro 42, number 42, Eddie Low. Quarterback, demi point numéro 26, number 26, Harry Skipper. Quarterback. 
demi de poids, numéro 24, number 24, Steve Wiggins. Defensive back, demi defensif, numéro 7, number 7, Richie Hall. Defensive back, demi defensif, numéro 3, number 3, Larry Hall. Safety, le maraudeur, numéro 27, number 27, Glenn Suter. Go now, go John. The go head go. coach, John Gregory. Ses assistants and assistants in the rest of the Western Division champion, Les Chocos de l'Ouest, Saskatchewan Rock Riders. From the Eastern Division, de la Division Est, l'attaque des champions, the starting offense of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. At center, le centre, numéro 56, number 56, Dale Sanderson. de numéro 63, number 63, Daryl Harl. Guard, le garde, numéro 58, number 58, Jason Riley. Le bloqueur, numéro 68, number 68, Mike Dirks. Tackle, bloqueur, numéro 66, number 66, Miles Goral. Slotback, demi-inséré numéro 23, number 23, Rocky Di Pietro. Slotback, demi-inséré numéro 89, number 89, Richard Estelle. Wide receiver, Elier Espacé, numéro 87, number 87, Tony Champion. Wide receiver, Elier Espacé, numéro 21, number 21, Wally Zatilny. Running back, demi, numéro 19, number 19, Derek McAdoo. Fullback, centre arrière, numéro 35, number 35, Jed Tommy. A 
at quarterback, le quart, numéro 2, number 2, Mike Kerrigan. The head coach, l'entraîneur-chef, Al Bruno. His assistants and the remainder of the Eastern Division champion and to the other members of the Champions of Nest, the Tiger Cats, the Hamilton. Well, both teams in the Dome undefeated this season. The Thai Cats winning their two regular season encounters here in the Sky Dome against the Argonauts. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders won their lone game in this facility against the Toronto Argonauts. A lot of emotion down there, Don. Neither one wants to be the first one to lose here. The biggest thing they got to do, get emotion out of the game after the first couple minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we now present the game officials for the 1989 Grey Cup. Mesdames et Messieurs, les officiels pour ce match de la Coupe Grey 1989. The referee, l'arbitre en chef, working his fourth Grey Cup game à son quatrième match, the Calgary, Dave Yule. Today's alternate, le substitut arbitre chef, his seventh Grey Cup assignment, à sa septième présence, Scarborough's Ross Barrier. The umpire, L'arbitre, in his eighth Grey up game, à sa huitième présence, Ottawa's Chuck Paul. Also from Ottawa, in his second Grey up à sa deuxième présence, headlinesman, le juge en chef de ligne, Ross Sanders. Our line judge hails from Calgary. Juge de ligne, his first Grey up à son premier match de Coupe Grey, Ross Hutchinson. The back judge, juge du champ arrière, Bob Steen of Edmonton, sa troisième Coupe Grey's third breakup. Today's field judge, le juge de champ, is Larry Rowan from Vancouver, his fourth breakup appearance à son quatrième match de Coupe Grey. And the alternate official, l'officiel substitut, is working his fifth breakup à son cinquième match de Coupe Grey from Winnipeg, Art McAvoy. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, today's games officials, les officiels du match d'aujourd'hui. And let's hope those men in the striped shirts have an easy job this afternoon and we don't see many flags to interrupt play. This is the fourth time that the Canadian Football League Championship game has been played indoors. The other three in Vancouver, beginning in 1983. That was the first CFL indoor game. Two other occasions in Vancouver, one of them won by the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Hamilton receives the ball. Have a good game, gentlemen. Ron, your thoughts on the choice of the Hamilton Tiger Cats to receive? I don't think it matters in here. You know, we're not worried about the wind and the rain today. Just go ahead and take the football and get the offense on the field. They need to get Kerrigan started early. Get him on the field right now. Was that your feeling as a quarterback? You wanted to get the offense into the game quickly? Oh, I always think so. Like I, I mentioned earlier, Don, emotion. It runs so high in a game like this. You got to get that emotion out of your system that first couple minutes. It's been building for a week. You have to get to where the talent comes to the front, and that's why you get out there quick. Well, of course, as everyone is aware, this is the first Grey Cup appearance for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders since 1976. 
when they lost at CNE Stadium 23-20 to the Ottawa Rough Riders. The Hamilton Tiger Cats last played in a Grey Cup game in 1986, defeating Edmonton 39-15. John Gregory hoping to win only the second Grey Cup in Saskatchewan Rough Rider history. Now, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, some special guests will perform the ceremonial opening kickoff. Quelques invités spéciaux pour le voté d'envoi potre colère. Please welcome, s'il vous plaît, accueillez the Canadian Football League Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, le président directeur général de la Ligue canadienne de football, Mr. Roy McMurtry. And the CFL president, le président de la Ligue canadienne, Mr. Bill Baker. The mayor of Tigertown, le maire de Hamilton, Hamilton's Bob Morrow. The mayor of the home of Ryder Pride, Regina's Dog Archer, le maire de Regina. The Premier of the Province of Saskatchewan, Grant Devine, Premier Ministre de la Saskatchewan. The Premier of Ontario, David Peterson, Premier Ministre Ontarien. Deputy Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, Premier Ministre Suprien, Donald Mazankowski. The Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, Le Lieutenant Gouverneur de l'Ontario, The Right Honourable, Le Très Honorable, Lincoln Alexander. The official party making its way to center field for the ceremonial kickoff. I still think former Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau holds the Grey Cup record for a kickoff chore. Of course, he prepared for for some time and even had a, cook, a kicking shoe on when he uh, put the foot to the ball. Doesn't seem like it's fair if you're going to practice. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't have a kicking shoe. As so often happens, one of the cameramen is hit by the ceremonial kickoff. And now the official party will leave the field. The photographers will also disperse. And then the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Hamilton Tiger Cats will take over in this 1989 Grey Cup game. This is always the worst part of the game, Don. You have the ceremonial kickoffs. I'm looking at it from a player's standpoint. You know, player introductions, they handle, but the rest of them are tough. It's tough to stand around and wait. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join Canadian recording artist Liberty Silver for the singing of our national anthem, Mesdames et Messieurs, au Canada. Oh, 
We have some final thoughts now from our game day experts as the linebacker Don Moan continues to resist the temptation to drill the quarterback Matt Dunnigan. It was legal on the field, not here. Don, if you're playing linebacker for either team today, what would be a key? You're going to have to pressure and confuse the opposing quarterback in order to be successful. Matt, if you went to bed last night knowing you were playing quarterback for Saskatchewan today, did you have nightmares about Covington and Walker getting to you? No, I couldn't think anything negative. I think all positive. That's taken for granted. The offensive line is going to keep those guys off of it. You're thinking strictly about your game plan at that point. And just assume you'll have the protection. That's exactly right. You're thinking nothing but positive thoughts. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for your contributions throughout Countdown and in our pregame ceremonies. We'll see you both at halftime. Stay with us. The game is upcoming. We'll return to the Sky Dome in just a moment. Welcome back to the Sky Dome in Toronto as we await the opening kickoff of this 1989 Grey Cup game. The build-up, the hype is over. The players are now center stage. It is up to them to perform. There's the signal from referee Dave Ewer. David Ridgway kicks off. McAdoo starts out from the 14-yard line. A couple of good blocks. And he runs it back to the 37. Mike Kerrigan threw for five touchdowns in the last game they played against Saskatchewan in a 46-40 win, so he knows he can move the football through the air. Kerrigan did not start in the Eastern Final against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. In the second half, he came off the bench as a replacement for Todd Dillon. He threw the only touchdown pass the Ticats registered last week in their 14-10 triumph. The handoff goes to Derek McAdoo, and McAdoo blows his way out to the 45-yard line. That will be a gain of close to six yards. The Hamilton Tiger Cats have some keys, but definitely the biggest thing they have going for them is Derek McAdoo running the football, catching the football. Tony Champion outside at that wide receiver. He's got to be big. Earl Winfield, we put him in there for this reason. He's going to get some wide receiver, but he's going to be in there on the kick returns, and that could decide the ball game. At the moment on this second down play, Wally Zatilne and Tony Champion are the wide receivers and McAdoo is the ball carrier for the first, first down for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, brought down by Gary Lewis. Well, we've got to look to see what Saskatchewan is going to do defensively and where Glenn Suter is going to line up today. But we talked about Gary Lewis, inside pressure, he's got to be there. Eddie Lowe is their best tackler, outside of Albright, who controls the middle, low sideline to sideline. And Harry Skipper has got to play well. This could be the biggest day of the year for him. Kerrigan reads the blitz well most times and gets that ball away quickly. He was trying to hit champion. Harry Skipper was defending against him. I think that may have prompted Al Bruno to start Kerrigan today. The fact that he throws just a little quicker than Todd Dillon. Oh, he sure does. Mike likes three steps and throw. He doesn't want to drop back. The thing he noticed here, the reason the ball was thrown back, Harry Skipper is a gambler. He's going to gamble on those plays. you got to go deep on him early. Second and 10, the ball is at the 49-yard line. Here comes the blitz from the outside, and they've got him. Glenn Suter came from the outside, Chuck Kingdom came up the middle. He come from that outside linebacker position, a 4-4 alignment, whatever you want to call it. They just bring him from the safety up on the outside. He came hard on the blitz, you'll see him at the top of the screen. Kerrigan is forced to step up, when he steps up the pressure inside gets him. Paul Osbaldiston with the first punt of the ball game, standing at his own 30-yard line. 12.53 is the time remaining in this opening quarter. The ball bounces to Mark Guy at the 21. And Guy tried to maneuver but couldn't escape the grasp with 12.41 left in the quarter. Saskatchewan starting quarterback Kent Austin did not throw as many touchdown passes this year as teammate Tom Burgess, but Ronnie had a better percentage. That's the key. They must control the football, and you do that by percentage. You do it by hitting those eight, nine yarders. First and ten from the 27-yard line incomplete. First pass over the middle intended for Ray Elgar. And they got to try to get that ball to Elgar. Tim McRae, it's going to be fun to watch him today because he's going to be a pass receiver. Even though he can run, I want to see who covers him man-to-man. -man. Fairholm, we talked about his speed and Narcisse, just what they mean to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. 
Second and 10 from the 27-yard line, 12-18, the time left, and it's still scoreless. Opening quarter of this 1989 Grey Cup game. Austin escapes the pressure, tries to dump it off to Nelson Jones. And it's two and out for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And they got the pressure up the middle. They want middle pressure on Kent Austin. That's what they want. Ronnie Glanton again beats the center inside, forces Austin to step around, and he has to throw the football away. They've taken that man, Daryl Corbin, out of the middle, putting him at a rush in. It's going to mean the tackle has to block him. Terry Baker stands at the 11-yard line. Don't be surprised that the Hamilton Tiger Cats try and go after this one. This was their game plan, to try and pressure him back in his own end. Excellent kick by Baker. That's a beauty. Winfield retreats to the 35-yard line, gets a couple of blocks. He loses the ball. It goes out of bounds. I think... It is going to be Hamilton ball, but the Riders are protesting that he kicked it out of bounds. I think he did kick the ball. That ball went off of his foot. That was a 23-yard run back. Winfield doing a lot of running, trying to pick up blocking help. And watch and see if, in fact, he kicks that ball out. He makes a lot of good moves, Don, coming back across the field. But that ball's going to come loose. It's going to be very interesting to see just where it went. There goes the ball off of his foot and out of bounds. He sure did. He did kick it, but it was not intentional. That's the ruling of the officials. Sideline pattern for a first down as Wally Zatilney makes the catch. Don, we talk about champion on skipper. I really believe Wally Zatilney can have a big part in today's game on Wiggins. Wiggins has not been tested. And Zatilni, with each game, the quarterbacks have gotten more and more confidence in him. Best seen last week when he catches the winning touchdown. He's been the busiest tie cat all week. With his video camera, I don't know how many tapes he has gone through recording every moment of this great cup appearance. Quickly inside to Richard Estelle for a gain of eight, maybe nine yards. Richie Hall took the feet out from under Richard Estelle. This is what Kerrigan does so well. You, you come and blitz him. All he does is look right now. When those linebackers disappear, you look for the ball. There's a heck of a mismatch in size at six foot two to five foot six. He should never stop him if they blitz. He'll catch a lot of them. And Estelle taking that hit from Hall. He is down. When you see Hall and Miles Gorrell standing side by side, one would never suspect they play the same game. <laughs> no, you really wouldn't. But I'll tell you one thing that Richie Hall does. He knows he can't take the guy on with strength, so he goes and cut the legs out from under him. That's exactly what he did. That was not Al Bruno's plan, but Earl Winfield, who was the D.I. for this game, will come in to replace Richard Estelle. Right now on the sidelines, let's bring in Steve Armitage. Don, as you might expect in a dome stadium, there was real concern on the part of the Hamilton Ticats with crowd noise. They felt the Ryder fans would out-cheer the Ticat fans, so they've developed an intricate set of hand signals for both defense and offense. That is something that teams have been forced to contend with in the past when they have gone into BC Play Stadium to take on the Lions. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers in particular a few years ago in the playoffs had real problems with crowd noise there. It can be tough in those stadiums. You have to know it's coming and be ready for it. Second and two, they won't get it. Eddie Lowe, the linebacker, made the contact. The Rough Riders had injury problems at that linebacking position this year. As a matter of fact, there was probably one point in the season where no one really wanted to dress as a Saskatchewan linebacker because of the number of injuries they had. Watch oh, the Eddie Lowe fill the hole on Derek McAdoo, the ball carrier, with help from Albright. All they do is fire off the ball, try to move him, and let McAdoo pick a hole. But Eddie Lowe went with him. You didn't block him, he'll make the hit. This is certainly within the range of Paul Osbaldiston, a 42-yard field goal attempt. It is good. So Paul Osbaldiston, who emerged as a kicking hero for the Hamilton Tiger Cats back in 1986, puts it through as the Tiger Cats are first on the board.
He's had an outstanding season. He really came along as a kicker this year. He started slowly, he struggled, but in the past five or six games, he just hasn't missed from those field goal shots, and his punting has improved a lot. Joe Zuber worked with him, and that really helped him. However, a very strange thing happened to that young man in Winnipeg this year. He was sitting at his locker. His helmet fell off the top shelf of the locker, hit him on the head, knocked him out. They had to take him to hospital for further examination for a suspected concussion. As a result, the Ticats began storing their helmets underneath the locker. Tell you about those kickers, man. You never know what they're going to do, do you? <laughs> The Rough Riders have opted to have the Ticats kick off following that Paul Osbaldiston field goal of 42 yards. Tim McRae waits for it at the 15-yard line. Oh, good hit on McRae. Frank Robinson, a former Saskatchewan Rough Rider, brought him down after a run back of 20 yards. Well, they kicked it to the right man. If you're the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, you want the ball in Tim McCray's hands. An outstanding kickoff return, man, but that's excellent coverage on the special teams. And it's a third of the game. We say it all year, and it's no more important than it is today. John Gregory indicated there really wasn't any doubt as to who his starting quarterback would be. He opted for Kent Austin, even though Tom Burgess finished the job against the Edmonton Eskimos last week. Austin runs to the 41-yard line, and Daryl Corbin, the middle linebacker, came over to make the tackle. Although Corbin isn't necessarily lining up at that middle linebacking position. But what he showed you he does have there is tremendous speed. It looked like Austin was going to lay in a car, uh, gain a lot of ground, but Corbin run him down. Mike Walker and the rest of them will shut it off inside. But Jim Rockford in the middle in that defense, he can really help those defensive backs, and they know he's there, and they can gamble a little more. Second and four from the 41, the pitch to Tim McRae. McRae will not get the first down. Tim Lorenz, who was playing that stand-up defensive end position, made the tackle. Lorenz played that spot for the first time last week against Winnipeg as the result of a wrist injury to Rod Skillman. You see the toss. Here comes Poley and Aldag leading it. But look at the tie catch. Stephen Jordan, number 12, up to turn it in. And as you say, Don, Lorenz is there to make the hit. An injured Saskatchewan Rough Rider, and it is Jeff Fairholm, and this could prove costly to Saskatchewan. Fairholm was hurt earlier in the year. He returned in a game against Calgary. One play, he was forced out of the game. They need Jeff Fairholm at that slot backing position if their passing attack is going to be successful. I had a talk with him yesterday about that ankle problem. He said it's only sore right in the front, and when they get it strapped and taped the way they have, he said it usually is no pressure, no problem. But the problem is the artificial turf, the continual pounding. He's just going to have to go with it for 60 minutes today. He'll be back. And despite the many millions of dollars that have been spent on the Sky Dome, the turf has drawn considerable criticism. Oh, it sure has, well, especially for the seams. that just doesn't fit right and so on, but that's something they'll work out over the winter, I'm sure. Saskatchewan is going after it on third and inches. Quarterback Kent Austin keeps. He had to get outside the 45-yard line, which it appears he has. What you have to like here is the way Kent Austin does it. A quarterback usually calling signals. While he's calling signals, he's looking for a place to go. He decides in his mind where he's going. He stepped to his left, got in behind Aldag and got the first down. That could be one of the interesting matchups today. Aldag working against Mike Walker. Well, I'll tell you, that, that's a great one because Aldag's a great blocker. And we, we've talked a lot about Mike Walker, his ability. Austin intercepted by Frank Robinson. He was looking for Fairholm, but Frank Robinson got in there. This is Foster's Grey Cup on CBC. Frank Robinson made the interception. Peter Giftopoulos should get the assist. Richard Estelle is back in for the Ticats at that spot back position as Kerrigan on first down tries to throw deep. Almost intercepted by Harry Skipper. 
Once again, Don, bring Glenn Suter up in that outside linebacker position. Now, we've got to know if he's going to blitz. We saw him blitz early. This time, they drop out four deep zone. When you throw down the middle against the four deep zone, you should have two defenders there, and there were. So that's the way you play it. Second and ten. The ball is at the 50-yard line. The two cornerbacks will be tested with Tony Champion, the CFL's leading pass receiver with 95 this year, working against them. Tony Champion makes the catch. A good move to get outside of Skipper. The Saskatchewan cornerback recovers, but not before Champion gets a first down. He appears to be hurt. Champion lines up at that wide position. He lines up. He looks in. He sees Glenn Suter up. Glenn Suter's on the line of scrimmage. He comes on the blitz. Tony Champion runs a slant to the inside. Get it in his hands. And Harry Skipper makes the big mistake and allows him outside. Now, you've got to go catch him because if he gets around there, it's over. Skipper manages to get hold of him. Let's see if we can see where he got hurt. I think when he was thrown out of bounds, he may have landed on the football. Well, it hurts. I'll tell you what. You get rib problems, you start landing on a football. Ray Jones... Appears to be working on the abdomen of Tony Champion. So once again, the designated import, Earl Winfield, will be pressed into action. He earlier replaced Richard Estelle at slot back. His versatility will be tested here as he moves into the wide receiving position. He also returns kicks, and he can play defensive back. That, that's why he's the designated import. He can do it all. He can catch the ball. All right, here it is. Now he pivots to the outside. He starts to run. Skipper's got to run him down. Let's see if we can see where he lands on the ball or what he does. He's looking on the side. That ball goes up in. And one thing it's going to do is going to knock the wind out of you in a hurry. Then if you don't break any ribs, you're lucky. And that's the big thing about it. I don't think he broke any. I think he'll be back. He was runner-up for the Outstanding Player Award in the Canadian Football League to Tracy Ham, the quarterback of the Edmonton Eskimos, who established a league record for quarterbacks this year, running for over 1,000 yards, a record that was held by a former Ticat player, Ken Hobart. Winfield is in there, replacing champion at wide out at his first and ten. Incomplete. So tell me, had a little trouble trying to get away from Harry Skipper. Try to run a pick, try to cross those two receivers, Try to get the two defensive backs to run into one another. And as a result, the Tilney cannot get in there. But again, Glenn Suter came on the blitz. So he's trying to get inside. Richie Hall's trying to get outside to cover Di Pietro. Skipper's coming in. It's a lot of congestion. If you break it clean and catch it, it's a touchdown. Second and 10 from the 31. Hamilton leads 3-0. 6-17 remaining in this opening quarter. Here's the blitz from the outside. Kerrigan gets away from Goldsmith, but he can't deliver the ball to Wally Zatilney. The big thing about it, a quarterback, when a rush comes like that and you step inside it, you got to be able to step inside, gain your composure, and throw it on the money. He couldn't do it. He, you get a little bit excited, and you throw it high. Watch, he sees it. He just has to let it go. Wally Zatilney really has no chance to catch this. It's just too far for him. Third and ten, Hamilton and Paul Osbaldiston for the second time will attempt a field goal. This one is four yards shorter than his previous field goal. It's a 38-yard effort. And like the first at two is good. And Hamilton leads by a score of 6-0 with 5.51 remaining in the opening quarter. Don, they've set the tempo that Hamilton feels they can move the football on him. Saskatchewan's got it's their turn. They've got to, they've got to show they can do it. And the Ticats will again be kicking off after the second Paul Osbald Osbaldiston field goal on the sidelines. Let's bring in Steve Armitage. Don, there's considerable concern on the Ticat bench, as you might expect, with the injury to Tony Champion. He has bruised ribs on the right side. He's being looked at by the team doctor and Jonesy, the trainer. They're checking him out. They may have to tape him up. They hope he can get back into the game, but uh, we really don't know just how serious it is right now. Tony Champion, the big weapon in the Hamilton attack this year. Their leading receiver with 95. He established a club record with 15 touchdowns. McRae from the 15-yard line on this kickoff return. 
He runs it back to the 43. Stopped by Steve Jackson. They're going to get over on the sideline, and Brian Wally and Sean Daniels are going to say, you should have followed us to the outside. Not really. McCray has to decide when it's time to go. He exploded. He just didn't get through there. 29 yards on that run back for Tim McCray. John Gregory signed to a new contract just before the season ended. And he has accomplished what some consider the major upset of all time in the CFL. Beating Edmonton last week. Mark Nye with a catch inside the 50-yard line stopped by Sonny Gordon. They broke a tendency. Tendencies mean you always do certain things. They bring number 18 Fairholm inside to block. Normally they run from that formation. All that does is get some single coverage. Mark Guy on Will Lewis, he makes the catch. He almost gets away from him right there. That's a good thing to do early. It breaks a tendency and that bothers the defense. 19 yard gain. James Ellingson is in that slot in place of Fairholm. Sideline pattern intended for Donald Narcisse. It's incomplete. Had to throw it high. The reason for it, Sonny Gordon, the inside halfback's floating out underneath that out. You've got to get it over his head and get it down. Sometimes you can't do it. You think Donald Narcisse was hyped for this game? He had a new hairdo at the team breakfast the other morning <laughs> with the Saskatchewan S cut on the side and the number 80 at the back. When you have the kind of year he's had, you can do anything you want. And some people have enough hair to do that. That's right. <laughs> Second and 10, Austin for Narcisse, incomplete. Good coverage by Lance Shields. He's the best defender in the tight pass secondary. That's why he always takes the tough guy man to man. Narcisse, we know, can catch the football. It's just a deep turn in pattern. One on one, Shields and Narcisse. Drivers out said, now come on in. That ball's got to come down lower. Got to be a little bit lower. But you see when a defensive back breaks to the football like that, that's good defense. Lance Shields knows how to play it. Winfield and Zatilny are back for this third down punt by Baker. Tony Champion has gone to the Ticat dressing room for further examination of that injury he suffered. Terry Baker with another great kick. This one is going to sail into the end zone and Zatilny is going to let it go for a single point. So with 4.09 remaining in the quarter, the Riders are on the board trailing by five. Al Bruno in his sixth year as head coach of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. John Gregory with his back to the camera now turning in his third year as head coach of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And the Sky Dome enables us to utilize an overhead camera as we look at the offense dispersed on this first down play from the 35-yard line after that Terry Baker single. Saskatchewan showing blitz movement at the line of scrimmage. This draws a penalty fly. The Riders lined up offside. Eddie Lowe was offside. This time they tried to give him a different look. Glenn Suter lined up where he normally does at that safety position. Then at the last second gets up and tries to come up the middle into Kerrigan's face. But that man lined up offside. A very intense individual. He was hurt earlier this year. He still wanted to play. Offside. Saskatchewan number 42. First down repeat. And the Rider equipment staff were telling us when we were in Saskatchewan for the game that Eddie Lowe had to sit out, they had to hide his equipment to keep him from practicing. Well, he learned that a long time ago, and he said, if you don't get hurt, somebody take your job. He says, I'll be out there. The penalty presents Hamilton with a first and five situation, and McAdoo will be very close to the first down, stopped by middle linebacker Dave Albright. Most all defenses play what they call gap control defenses, which means if you start to run to the left, everybody comes down. When you cut back, the backside linebacker should be there. There he was waiting on him. It's just short of a first down, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats send out their short yardage offense. Some quarterbacks have been known to throw in this position. It's better on third down. McAdoo gets the call, and if he made it, he just barely got across that 45-yard line. Vince Goldsmith was the first to make contact with McAdoo, but the referee, Dave Ewell, signals a Hamilton first down. When you get in those short yardage situations, it's the team that gets the lowest that wins, and Vince Goldsmith got awful low and got penetration, 
but he just wasn't able to make the tackle. And then the Hamilton Tiger Cats won the other battles, and they get the first down. 235 remaining in the opening quarter. First and 10, Hamilton from the 45-yard line. Winfield on the sidelines will get another Hamilton first down before being forced out of bounds by Larry Hogue. Good read by Kerrigan. He reads so well. He will show you a zone defense. We're going to look straight down on top of it. What happens is Larry Hogue will look for the defensive back number three. You'll see him standing with number 89 as the ball goes by. And look who's outside all by himself. Now this, you'll see the man coming into the picture. There he is, Steve Wiggins, but he was in a zone defense, which means he can't get there any faster. Winfield lines up in that wide out position, replacing the injured Tony Champion, Derek McAdoo, the ball carrier, with a pickup of about three yards. Got behind Daryl Harley, his offensive guard, did a good job and turned it back in to, to uh, Dave Albright. Second and seven, Hamilton. The ball is at the Saskatchewan. 47-yard line. Kerrigan. Looked as though he was going to run them. Throws, and Winfield has another Hamilton first down. He was looking for that quick out pattern to the right side to Earl Winfield. And Harry Skipper again gambled and won. That forced him to pull it down. And when he started to scramble, watch him. He wants to throw it right now. He has to hold it. Now as he runs, watch the linebackers come up. Eddie Lowe leaves. They throw the ball right where he left. Make that quarterback cross the line of scrimmage with it. First and ten. Hamilton at the Saskatchewan 28-yard line. Over the middle. And... Did he catch it? Estelle has got it. It was deflected, and Estelle apparently was able to pull it down before it hit the ground. Well, the reverse angle could be very revealing on this one. That's excellent concentration. The blitz comes. Same play they opened the game with. Only this time, Richie Hall goes for the interception. All he does is tip it up, and then Estelle turns around and makes the catch. That's you know, that's the way it goes. That's a break. That's played very, very well by Richie Hall. We didn't need the reverse angle on that one. You saw very clearly that Richard Estelle made the catch. First down into the end zone. Touchdown, Tony Champion. champion went to the dressing room was retaped and that is his first play back on the field since that injury and he responds with a 13-yard touchdown reception from Mike Kerrigan Paul Osvaldiston with the point after and with 15 seconds remaining in this opening quarter the Hamilton Tigers have taken control we shouldn't be surprised by that throw. Think back to last week, Wally Zatilny caught the touchdown pass, and he said they normally don't come my way. They go to champion. We say he's going to go after Skipper. Where does he go? Right to Harry Skipper over his head. Excellent uh, concentration. Easy catch. Step. Now, just run. The ball's going to be thrown outside. Skipper's got to turn and play the ball. Fade. That's what you mean. You, where he was lined up, fade to the sideline and catch it. The Ticats execute that play so well. Kerrigan threw the same type of pass to Wally Zatilny in that 14-10 victory over the Winnipeg Blue Bombers last Sunday. But it was Earl Winfield that made the catches that got the Ticats in position for Kerrigan to throw that touchdown pass to Tony Champion. McCray on this kickoff return. the field position the Rough Riders and their fans have been looking for on those kickoff runbacks from Tim McRae. When a team scores on you, you got to get the momentum back. This does it for you in a hurry. Look at Tim McRae. Watch the move on Donahue Grant and Sonny Gordon. Watch another move coming. I'll tell you, he's tough to tackle and that you love to start on the other side of midfield. 55 yards on the return. This should be the final play of the quarter. The first down from the 47-yard line and it's McRae 
Diving ahead for about two, stopped by linebacker Peter Giftopoulos. And that's the final play of the opening quarter. 13-1 is the score. This is Foster's Breakup on CBC. the second quarter looking at second and eight the ball is at the 46 of the Hamilton Tiger Cats they lead it 13 to 1 Austin dumping it off intended for Nelson Jones and the way that ball floated that's a dangerous type of throw the other team could pick it up what they like this is the screen this is that slip screen running screen but look who's there Ronnie Glanton you get the pressure inside that allows Grover Covington as soon as Nilsson Jones takes off he runs with him very fortunate the ball's not intercepted Terry Baker who has been inconsistent throughout the course of this season has been punting exceptionally well through that opening quarter here in the Sky Dome He's trying to angle it to the sidelines, and he'll put it out of bounds. An ideal kick down at the five-yard line. I think they'll actually spot it at the seven, but he has done his job putting that ball out of bounds. A 39-yard punt. The Thai Cats leading 13-1, as you may expect, also lead statistically. And they have had the football for twice as long as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. When you only have two first downs, it makes it tough to control the ball, which means time-wise it's going to go against you. And again, now right now, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders need the defense to come up big for them. Make them punt the ball in two plays or get a turnover. First and ten from the seven-yard line. The handoff to McAdoo. He gets a big hole and runs it out to the... 16-yard line, he'll be about a yard short of a first down. Richie Hall made the tackle. Boy, there's an awful big hole for the ball carry to go through. We're going to take a look at him coming out of that halfback position. Watch the hole open up. There goes Vince Goldsmith to the outside. Glenn Suter's block to the outside. Jason Riley is the one that turns upfield and seals it, and then McAdoo could just run. Second and just a little more than one. It's going to be close. Jed Tommy, the ball carrier, and it may require a measurement. Jed Tommy has indicated that this will be his final game in the Canadian Football League. He is going to retire at the conclusion of this Grey Cup game. He has been a very vital part of that Hamilton offense as a blocking back. Four years out of Guelph University, it is a surprise that after four years, a guy would think of re retiring. But you know, sometimes he's proved that what he can do. He's been in a great cup. He's had a good career. He feels it's time to move on. You certainly can't blame him. It's his decision. On his first carry of the afternoon, Jed Tommy gets the Hamilton first down. One of his more memorable moments in the CFL occurred at the Hall of Fame game in Hamilton. His grandfather, Andy Tommy, had been inducted, and after he scored a touchdown, he presented his grandmother with the ball. Derek McAdoo, driven back by that hard-charging Saskatchewan defense, led by Gary Lewis. Once again, Glenn Suter at the outside got inside the block. Watch when he runs. You'll see Glenn Suter go by on the left side of your screen. There he goes. That forces him right back in. And when you have three big guys like Goldsmith, Lewis, and Lowe waiting on you, you're not going very far. Second and ten. The ball at the 17-yard line. Champion is stopped at the 25. And he is going to be very slow in getting back on his feet. He, I'm quite sure, is playing in pain. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you bruise some ribs, they hurt quite a bit. You just, you're either going to play with it or leave. There's not anything you can do for it, it just hurts. Champion was stopped a yard and a half, maybe even two yards short of a first down, and leading 13 1. 
Al Bruno didn't hesitate. He sent out the punting unit. Well, just think back to the last time, second down and one and a half. We only went and made it by like three or four inches. When it's second, there's third down in this far, you better go ahead and kick it. Richie Hall and Mark Guy are back for Paul Osbaldiston's third down kick. Richie Hall takes it from the 35-yard line. He's hit hard as he's brought down at the 47. 11.55 remains in the half. In this 1989 Grey Cup game being played at the Sky Dome, the city of Regina represented in the Grey Cup for the 14th time. The city of Hamilton represented for the 27th time. First and 10, Kent Austin looking to the sidelines. Farrell back in the ball game, makes the catch. Taken down hard by Sonny Gordon. Well, Jeff Farrell's back in the ball game after that little bit of an ankle injury. The writer said today, Don, they were going to move the pocket around for Kent Austin. This time they sprint him to his left. We're going to see Fairholm drive, get Sonny Gordon turned around, breaks back outside. And a well-run pattern, and then he's got the good speed. 22-yard gain, and that's what they've got to get that offense rolling. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. Austin throwing deep for Donald Narcisse. It's knocked away. Both Narcisse and Elgard were in the area, and so were two Hamilton defensive backs. And you see who came out of the center field area to make the play. Number six, Jim Rockford. That is his job. He's got to go to the football. He got that hand up and knocked it away. Looks like he hurt his shoulder a little bit. And Lance Shields is the other one that's down on the ground. After Rockford went up, he was hit hard from the backside by Elgard, who was also going after that ball. The right hand knocked it away, and he landed on his left shoulder, and then Lance Shields got up limping a little bit, and he is still on the ground over there, and Ray Jones is looking at him. Lance Shields is having that left leg looked at, and the way Ray Jones is treating him, you might suspect a uh, cramp. Lance Shields coming out of the Buffalo area to join the Hamilton Tiger Cats in 1977. He was voted Buffalo's High School Athlete of the Year. Well, I'll tell you, I could believe that. He's an excellent athlete. He's a good basketball player. He's a well-rounded athlete. And you know Don takes a lot of ability to play out there on the corner. Well, one of the features of the Sky Dome are the private boxes. And many of the spectators at this 1989 Grey Cup game are viewing the game from the comfort of a private box. And that is the Foster's box, as many of the company's executives and some of their favorite customers are watching the game from there. This necessitates now Don, Don, Donahue Grant goes to Jim Rockford's position, and Jim Rockford will go back to the corner where he started the season. But they're a much better football team when Rockford's in the middle because that's what he does, gets to the football. Second and ten, the fake inside to Nelson Jones. There's the pass for Elgar. A great block inside by Nilsson Jones. Kent Austin like a quick fake to a draw. Now, Elgar, we say, is a possession-type receiver. He's big. He comes across the middle. He's an easy target to find. You throw it up, let him go get it, and he did. Right across the middle of the field. First and 10, Saskatchewan from the 24 of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. 10-36 remaining in the first half. Kent Austin looking for Fairholm. He runs out of room in the corner. And the ball goes out of bounds. That's that play we talked about, Don. We drew it for you. Down, out, and turn up the sidelines. And that's what Jeff Fairholm tried to do. He just didn't have enough room on the short side of the field. Rockford has to cover Narcisse. This is a tough job. Let's see what they're going to do here. You always got to let them know you're around. <laughs> Curricular activity, Rockford and Narcisse on second and ten. Kent Austin drills it for Narcisse, first down at the five. No 
doubt about what you do when the starting corner goes out of the ball game. You got your best receiver, their best corner is gone. You have to try to get to him. Now he starts to his left. He gets the one-on-one -on -one coverage coming back. He throws the football. Narcisse clears it right across in front of Donahue Grant. And then Rockford, all he can do is trail him across the field. A heck of a throw and a good play by Narcisse. First and goal. Donahue Grant at the safety position. Rockford on the corner. End zone. Touchdown. Just a corner pattern comes off. Good move. Runs in behind Sonny Gordon. They didn't get the switch made. You saw Sonny Gordon leave him. That means Donahue Grant's got to pick him up. Soon as Elgar saw that, he ran away from the cover. David Ridgway adds the point after. And only five points separate from Mrs. Foster's great cup on CBC. The middle that time, and they released Jet Tommy, and he just couldn't get him the football. Mike Kerrigan's job today will find will be to find out where Glenn Suter is lining up. That's all he needs to see. So far this first half, we're, we're just key Glenn Suter. If he drops it, he's owned. If he puts it, it's a, a full out blitz man cover. Pass is complete to Richard Estelle. That should be good for a first down. If they can force him to hold the ball just a little bit longer, they got a chance because they're getting close, but that's the name of the game. Kerrigan doesn't hold it very long. Now they keep the slot back in. There's Suter. Two points for a takedown. Rocky DiPietro, the CFL's all-time leading pass receiver, 655 catches, has not had a pass thrown his way so far this afternoon, but that block enabled Kerrigan to find the staff. This time he finds Di Pietro, and he's got a first down to the 30. The Riders so far, every time they have blitzed Suter, they've gone man-to-man -man coverage. This time they blitz him, they go to the zone, which means Skipper will take that quick out away. But Richard Estelle just hooks right in the middle in a hole. There's nobody there. He makes the catch, turns it upfield, takes two or three Riders to bring him down. That's a sight adjustment by the receiver. He sees the hole, he stops quarterback has to find him. 17 yards for one of the older players in the CFL, Rocky DiPietro, who will celebrate his 34th birthday in January. Get, get. Oh, no, He'd no, like no, to no, add a great no, cup no. ring. Tony Champion is the target. He's overthrown. Why he was so far open? Harry Skipper bit on it. Champion came off, took about four steps upfield and stopped. Skipper started off, and then he just run right by him. Kerrigan just threw it too far. Watch him. This is good. This is a battle. What? He'll stop. Now, here comes Skipper, and he takes off. And you can't let a guy with champion speed by you. When you're a quarterback, this is the biggest fear you have. When you have a guy wide open, don't miss him. Second and 10, Hamilton. 7.08 remaining in the half. The ball is just outside the 30-yard line of Saskatchewan. And there's the blitz back into his open touchdown. in time. The result is a 30-yard touchdown throw to Derek McAdoo. The biggest thing with a quarterback when you blitz, if you throw quick, you'll get rid of it. He came outside. You must get up the middle in his face, and they couldn't do it. The point after by Paul Osbaldiston. And the Hamilton Tiger Cats have regained their 12-point advantage. From one of the many private boxes in the Sky Dome on two levels, this is the view from the end zone. The slogan of the Ticats this year has been its feeding time, and this Ticat offense has been hungry in this first half. That's what they needed to do, get Kerrigan off to a quick start, and boy, they have. Mark Guy on the kickoff return. 
Guy was tripped up by Daryl Corbin at the 35-yard line. All right, watch from the sky. Look, no pressure inside it. Good job by Jason Riley and Jed Tommy. The blitz, the quarterback knows the free man's going to come outside. I've got to get rid of it. And he did. Glenn Suter allowed McAdoo inside, which is tough to keep him out of there when you're blitzing. And he makes the catch and goes in. First and 10, Saskatchewan from the 35-yard line. Ken Austin is throwing deep for foul. Receiving end of the Kent Austin throw. We've had three momentum changes in about the last four minutes. You know, the Riders scored to get momentum. The Ticats took it away. But the first play, we talked about Fairholm in the opening that if he catches that football with his speed, it is over. And he showed no doubt. That was great concentration. It was never in doubt after he got it. David Ridgway again cuts the deficit to five points. Celebrates the Jeff Fairholm touchdown. Let's take another look at him. Give him time. He's going to go deep with it. He gets that safety out of the middle. One on one coverage. We talk about his speed, but what concentration. Stephen Jordan had a hold of him, couldn't slow him down. And once he got behind him, just go ahead and run home with it, Jeff. It's an easy little jog. Look at that concentration. You saw Stephen Jordan try to grab him, but right here, it's over 75 yards. So they're right back in it. And there was probably no one cheering louder in the Sky Dome than his father, Larry <laughs> Fairholm, a former star with the Montreal Alouettes. I wouldn't think so. That's quite a thrill for him. I know Jeff's very happy playing in Saskatchewan, and I know his dad's been out there quite a few times because we see him all the time. He was runner-up to Rocky D. Pietro of the Tie Cats for Canadian Player of the Year honors. A 75-yard touchdown. What an exciting first half we have been witness to in the Sky Dome. Zatilny running to the outside. He can't get away from John Hoffman. 6.24 remains in this first half. A concerned Al Bruno looks on. His Ticats this year established a club record for points, 519. But of concern is the 517 they gave up, also a club record. Oh, yeah, you have to be concerned about that. And right now, Saskatchewan's got to be concerned in getting that defense up in Kerrigan's face. My Al Bruno's getting great job, an excellent job up front by that offensive line. From the 38, it is first and 10, Hamilton. Kerrigan, a sideline pattern to champion. He steps out of bounds, short of a first down. Now, they usually line Champion up to the right. This time, they put him to the left side of the formation on, on Wiggins. Saskatchewan's dropping into a zone, which means he'll go down and out. See, Wiggins is a long way off. He's got the deep responsibility. He cannot stop that pass in his own defense. It's not his responsibility. All he can do is come up and chase him out of bounds. A wide-open offensive display at the Sky Dome in this 1989 Grey Cup game. Second and about two. Same type of play, and this time Champion breaks it. And each time he gets up after taking a hit such as he did there from Glenn Suter, he is very slow in getting back in his feet. If you ever bruised your ribs, you'll know what he's feeling. It feels like a knife being stuck in you when you get hit. Again, second and two, expecting run. Champion just catches the ball in the line of scrimmage, makes a move on Wiggins, and away he goes. First and 10, Hamilton at the Saskatchewan 48-yard line. The pitch to McAdoo, he cuts it back inside. He is running hard. He dove to the 40. Good job up front. Once the hole is created, McAdoo just turns on the Jets, and then you run till they hit you. If they don't hit you, you'll run all day. Jason Riley again pulls on that toss to McAdoo. Chuck can't get down the 
McAdoo fourth this season in the CFL rushing statistics, 1,039 yards. Reggie Taylor of Edmonton was the number one runner with over 1,500 yards. Second and two. I can't recall seeing Derek McAdoo running as hard in any game this season. No, he's running very well. In fact, in his two games against Saskatchewan, Donnie only averaged 2.3 yards. But today, look at this. A good job. You see Jason Riley help the center, and then when the center has him alone, he comes off on the linebacker, and that's where uh, McAdoo ran, right between them. A good job up front. He's had 10 carries for 53 yards so far. Harrigan throwing for Estelle too high. They've been, Saskatchewan's been mixing up the defenses now. They're trying to give him a different look all the time. They went back to the Glenn Suter blitz from the outside. Harry, they hurried his throw, Harry, and he, was, he, he had to throw it too high for Estelle to catch it. I talked about the Hamilton Tiger Cats offensive and defensive performance this year. While the Saskatchewan Rough Riders had the second best offensive production, they also had the Sleeks second worst defense as far as yielding points is concerned. Rocky D. Pietro steps out of bounds with a Hamilton first down at the 13-yard line. Send Wally D. Tilney straight up the field, clear out the area. Zone defense, Rocky D. Pietro turns to the outside, Kerrigan finds him. They work very well together. They work a lot. Comes in like he's going to block. Now when he turns outside, zone defense, he just keeps running. Richie Hall sets in there in case something's coming back inside, but the open area, Kerrigan found it. First and ten, the ball is at the 13, 324, the time remaining in the half. McAdoo following a couple of lead blocks, breaks the tackle. He'll be close to another first down as he got to the five, maybe even the four and a half yard line. Don, you talk about McAdoo's running ability, and we're seeing more today than we've seen a while ago. That man, Dave Allwright, does not miss very many tackles, and he had McAdoo, and he stepped right out of the grass. They rule that he touched at the five, so it will be second and two. You see Allwright coming, coming around to make the block. He got a hold of it. He stepped right out of it. Good job of running by Derek McAdoo. Three minutes, the time remaining in the half. Hamilton leads by five. This is Foster's Break Up on CBC. While the Rough Riders struck quickly from 75 yards out for their touchdown, the Ticats have been putting together a drive that has carried them to the five. Six plays, 66 yards, second and two. McAdoo has a first down, stopped at the one. He's running like a man possessed. A good job of blocking, but boy, that time Albright didn't miss him. He came from a long way to make the tackle. We're going to take a look at it again. Watch him run. Watch down block. Miles Morrell. Here comes Jason Riley. He goes after number 12 for 42, but look at Albright come and make the hit, and that saves the touchdown. First and goal, Hamilton. McAdoo, touchdown. The second score of the game for Derek McAdoo. One on a pass reception, that one on a one-yard run. Coming right in behind Jason Riley, Dale Sanderson, and Daryl Harley. He, when he got the head and shoulders moving forward, he got low, and his momentum carried him right in. Ball has Baldiston with the point after, and again, the Ticats lead by 12. Forty-two points already, and we're not even halfway home. <laughs> I'll tell you, you get down close, you got to get down as low and just start blocking hard. Look at him. Once he decides where he's going, get the head and shoulders, get behind those shoulder pads down low, and drive for the goal line. Well, I think the over-under line for this ball game was 47 points. That's going to be blowing to smithereens today. <laughs> Maybe by the first half. McAdoo, 13 carries for 64 yards. 
He also contributed a 30 yard touchdown on a pass from Mike Kerrigan. 27 15, the Tie Cats in front. Paul Osbaldiston got them started with a pair of field goals from 42 and 38 yards. Mark Guy on this kickoff return. He started at the 10 yard line. He has speed. Out to the 47, stopped there by Donnie Hugh Grant. 2.24 left, second quarter. Don Austin would love to see seven more on the board and go in trailing by five at halftime. And I'm sure Kent Austin was taking a close look at the people coming onto the field for the Hamilton Ticats to see if Lance Shields was returning. Earl Winfield's gone to the corner. Put Rockford back outside. You mentioned it early. That's why he is the designated import. Donald Narcisse was the intended receiver. He took some punishment from Jim Rockford. Those two have something going. That the result of an earlier collision and pushing and shoving battle. And then Narcisse was able to beat Rockford for a big game down to the five yard line that led to the Algar touchdown. Going to test Winfield, but. When that ball's in the air, this is Hamilton's defense has improved a whole lot since Rockford went in the middle. And that's what he's supposed to do. Get to the football and hit somebody when they come in the middle. Second and ten. Austin over the middle. Addington makes the catch at the 50. First down, Saskatchewan. He yeah, throw that ball, release those receivers downfield. We say you must throw downfield on Hamilton because they play man to man. And then when Ellingson turns to the inside, he's underneath Rockford and there's nothing he can do about it. You see Githopolis jump, but look at this. He's underneath, catch is made. There's Jordan, and here it comes. Well, we won't see him, but Rockford got there. Austin completes the pass to Narcisse, short of a first down. He'll be knocked down at the 45, but I think they'll rule his forward progress carried through to the 43-yard line. What a wide open offensive display we have been treated to today. Saskatchewan has scored on its last two possessions. Hamilton has scored on four of its last five possessions. Second down play. Austin gets the first down with Ray Elgar. 148, the time left in the half. 27-15. The tie cats lead. Down and out. All coaches will tell you, throw that ball down and out. Sprint to your right, buy some time, throw it outside to your good clutch receiver, Elgard. He's got to step on the defender, clear out the area with Narcisse, and let him get out of bounds and stop the clock. Ellingson in the ball game in place of Jeff Fairholm, who scored that 75-yard touchdown. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Austin going to the end zone. Knocked away by Jim Rockford, intended for Narcisse. Well, you know, we keep talking about it, Don, but that's what he's there for. He had Earl Winfield beaten, and when that ball is in the air, Rockford can go a long way. He came very close to being knocked out of bounds or running out of bounds, and you see Jim Rockford, who is playing that safety position again, after shifting for a few series to the cornerback spot, Replacing the injured Lance Shield. Winfield is out there now. Rockford back at his more familiar safety position. And I think Rockford's still hurting a little bit, too. He's keeping that right arm right down at his side. Second and 10, and Allison the dip has a first down. Well, what's nice there, Don? What they're doing to Rockford to try to do is send Elgard straight down the field. That makes Rockford go deep. When he gets deep, Ellingson cuts right in underneath it, and there's nobody there to help out on it. Good throw by Austin. So you see Rockford, but he's back too deep to where he can get up there and knock it down. First and 10, Saskatchewan from the 16. 120 remaining in the half. Austin throwing for Ellingson. First down inside the five. You know, Don, half the time, I'm not sure there's any defenses out there. That ball's just going up and down the field. This is a great offensive display in this second quarter by both teams. Yeah. 
see Austin sprint to his left. See Ellingson start in. That's that pattern Fairholm ran a while ago. Start to the inside, then come on right back outside on that one-on-one -on -one coverage. And Gordon has to run a long way to make the tackle. First and goal, Saskatchewan. Austin will put it up again. Narcisse! Did he get in? Uh, it's got to be a touchdown. If they don't give him a touchdown, I'm not going to believe it. You bet you it was. We're going to get a look at the replays in a little bit. When he comes to the inside, that ball and hit his numbers on the end zone side of the field. It took a moment, and you heard the crowd react as the official raised his arms after conferring with another of the officials. And they give Donald Narcisse the touchdown on the five-yard throw from Kent Austin. 44 seconds, the time remaining in a wild first half at the Sky Door. A point after by Ridgeway. And again, only five oh, yeah, points yeah. separate the Eastern champion Hamilton Ticats, the Western champion Saskatchewan Rock Riders. Well, we said Austin wanted to win five points down. If they can hold on 44 seconds, they will. All right, we're going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage to the left side. An excellent block by Milson Jumbo. Look where it's caught. He catches the ball, his feet are in the end zone, touchdown. One-on-one, -on -one. drive him outside, now turn inside, come to the football. Catches it, feet are in the end zone, no problem. What a heck of a show we're getting. Well, there's no question the Riders are attempting to exploit the inexperience of Winfield, who has moved into that corner position. There you see the yes that Donald Narcisse <laughs> has cut into the side of his hairdo and the number 80 on the back. That we talked about earlier. But Kent Austin has been working on that left corner position of the Tie Cats after Lance Shields went up. You gotta do that, boy. I'll tell you, anytime you get a starter out of a ball game, you go to the replacement. They they tried Rockford there, but they were getting hurt inside. They feel they're better with Winfield as an athlete and keep Rockford at home in the middle to help out deep. Wally Zatilney will return this David Ridgeway kickoff. Finally brings him down at the 32, a run back of just 10 yards, and he ran a long way to get 10. Wiggins missed him the first time. He figured, if I just wait a second, he'll come back. Sure enough, he did, and they got him down with 33 seconds left. 200 passing yards already for Mike Kerrigan. Remember, these two teams hooked up in a wild game on August the 18th, won by the Ticats, 46-40 at Iverwin Stadium. This could be bad news for the Thai Cats. Derek McAdoo is down, although as Ray Jones hustles out onto the field, he indicates he's okay. Now, Ray Jones is gonna tell him, if you're hurt, stay down. If you're not, I don't wanna run all the way out there for nothing. <laughs> Lopes will replace Derek McAdoo. Talking to Sam before the ball game on the field. I asked him, I said, could the season have ended any better for you? No, he's a rookie out of McMaster. He backs up Jed Tommy and backs up Derek McAdoo. So he's going to get his chance to get into the Great Cup game for an offensive play and not just special teams like he usually does. A backup this year, but if Tommy does carry through with his retirement plans, he could be a starter in the 1990 season for Hamilton. Sam Locks at the moment replacing Derek McAdoo. He must well for at least one play. There's the drop. Jed Tommy will get five not much more stopped by Richie Hall 29 seconds the time remaining send locks in motion try to get that linebacker to loosen up which he did and then come back with the draw if Margaret Mead saw this the famed anthropologist might launch another expedition <laughs> Rocky D. Pietro. He tried to pitch it out. He loses the ball. Saskatchewan. And Vince Goldsmith has it. One second left in the half. Well, that's a big, big mistake when you get close to the half. He had the first down. 
If they were going to try to score, they would have thrown on first down. All they was trying to do is get the half over. You see the zone defense. They drop it out of there, not taking any chances. DiPietro makes the catch. Wiggins makes the tackle. Right here, he thinks he can lateral the football, but watch coming in from the left of the screen. There it is. Glenn Suter knocks it away, and the Saskatchewan Roughriders are going to get to kick a field goal with one second on the clock. Well, David Ridgway is certainly capable. Although many times at Taylor Field in Regina, when he has hit from a long way out, he has had the benefit of a following win. No such good fortune with the roof closed at the Sky Dome. I still like his chances. I, I think Ridgeway could make, reach it from somewhere 55 plus. This one's going to come just around 50 yards. Be a 49-yard try. Al Bruno has called a timeout, giving Ridgeway just a little more time to think about this kick. And maybe for his team to plot what strategy they will employ and perhaps trying to block it. John Gregory is going to call him over and say, make it. <laughs> and I don't know what else you'd say to Ridgeway. They know this. If they miss it, he's going to run it out. They're going to try to run it out. So what he's saying is that tell him to cover. Block first, but cover. In case it's rolling around, may be forced to give up one. Because if he can get it out of there with one second, it's coming out. The ball will be spotted at the 50-yard line. The Grey Cup record is 52 yards. This is going to fall short, and Zatilny will run it out. And that will end the first half as Zatilny is taken out of bounds. And what a wild, entertaining first half we have been witness to at the Sky Dome. I was a little surprised. I knew we were going to get a high-scoring game. I thought it might start a little slow. Think back, Don. We, we talked about Hamilton taking the ball to start the football game. We said we won their offense on there to get things rolling. The Ticat offense come out and started fast with 13 points. It took Saskatchewan until the second quarter to get on track. Well, we didn't get a touchdown until late in the first quarter, only 15 seconds remaining. And it was 13-1, Hamilton at the end of one quarter. At halftime, it is 27-22, Hamilton. Let's now join Steve Armitage. Thank you, Don. The head coach oh. of the Hamilton Ticats with me now, Al Bruno. Al, you promised a wide-open, high-scoring, yeah. entertaining first half. It was indeed. That's what the fans have seen so far. Is a lot of throwing, a lot of scoring, and uh, uh, both lines are, are giving our quarterbacks time to throw. And that's, and you see the outcome right now, the score. Are you concerned about your defense? I sure am, and I, I guess John Gregory is still on his defense. So. We have to play better defensively. Our offense is playing real good ball today. Defense has come, come on a little strong. Now, good luck to you and the Ticats in the second Thank half. You. The Hamilton Ticats are leading 27-22. The Grey Cup on CBC continues in just a moment. to the Sky Comb and the Grey Cup on CBC. With me now, the head coach of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, John Gregory. John, you're behind. You're not very happy. Well, our, our, they've done a nice job offensively, and we knew that Kerrigan would be throwing that quick stuff, and he's doing a nice job of it. We just got to do a better job on coverage. What adjustments do you have to make? Well, I think we I think we have to stay with what we're doing, but we just have to, uh, I think we've got to play him a little bit tighter, and we've still got to show him things and then take it away. John, good luck in the second Thanks. half. Thank you. Okay, Scott, over to you. All right, then, Steve Hamilton leading Saskatchewan 27 22 of the half, and John Gregory's comments providing fuel for conversation with our game day experts who are Argo linebacker Don Moen and BC quarterback Matt Dunnigan. And certainly that first half provides lots of fuel for conversation. Don Moen, if you're playing linebacker for Saskatchewan today, I suspect you found out in the first half that you cannot play that gambling, blitzing style against Hamilton today. This is a defensive player's nightmare. Mike Kerrigan is on. He is hot. He is getting rid of the ball quickly and hitting his receivers. 
and exploiting the Saskatchewan blitz. Saskatchewan has to show him the blitz and drop off into some zone coverages and try to confuse Mike a little bit. That's one quarterback to another. You must credit Mike Kerrigan with playing exactly the way he had to in that first half. Uh, you, you credit Mike Kerrigan, sure, but you got to credit their offensive line. They're doing the job of picking up the blitz, give Mike the time to throw the football down the field. Of course, he's reading, doing a heck of a job, uh, reading the blitz and doing his thing. And so is Ken Austin on the other side. You know, it's just been a back and forth situation. It's been exciting for the fans. If you're a quarterbacking Saskatchewan, are you in the room now saying to yourself, hey, we've got to find a way to get our running backs in the game? Certainly. They've been dormant to this point. I look at Milson Jones. I look at Tim McRae. They're not involved in this game. What we said earlier, uh, what Ken Austin and tipped us off on every throwing the football, they've stuck to that, and it looks like they're going to continue to do so. And Don Moan, if you're a linebacker for Saskatchewan in the room now, have you taken personal offense to the fact that they posted 27 points against you? Or are you motivated by that coming out for the second half? Well, you better be motivated for it for the second half, or you're in for a long afternoon. Saskatchewan's in this football game, and they have to, they have to remember that, and they have to come out like this game is nothing, nothing. And like I say, if they show Mike some things and then drop off into zone coverages, I think they'll be successful in the second half. Matt, you know the charge against you for years has been in big games, you get too wound up and too tight. I think you made a very uh, wise observation in the first half of this game that Saskatchewan may have begun a little bit too tight. That's right. I, I noticed that in Harry Skipper. Now he's calming down and he's starting to play his game. I think that uh, one thing that Coach Greg, you mentioned, and it's very true, if they're going to play that blitzing type of defense, they got to play them a little tighter, meaning the cornerbacks or defensive backs, and not let Mike get the easy, quick throw off. Don, earlier we talked about you and Matt Dunnigan having played in the greatest Grey Cup game ever. That was 87 at BC Place in Vancouver, in which, unfortunately for you, Dunnigan and the BC, or I should say Dunnigan and the Eskimos, beat the Toronto Argos. And I would say that this game, the first half of, it, half of it at least, is holding its own as far as greatness is concerned. Boy, this is exciting football. I don't think I've ever seen a Grey Cup as exciting as this. And uh, the 87 Grey Cup is exciting for an awful lot of people, but I'll tell you, it wasn't for the Toronto Argonauts. But uh, if we get another half like this, the fans are in for a real treat. Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate your comments. Stay with us. We'll return with more of our halftime show from the Sky Dome. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders ponder the first half, after which they trail here at the Sky Dome. Welcome back as we continue with our halftime show. We got a lot of answers to the questions we posed at the start of our telecast for the first 30 minutes of play. Let's go upstairs for some analysis from Don and Ron. Well, this game, Scott, looks as though it's going to establish a lot of Grey Cup game records. The most points in the Grey Cup, 77 in 1956, as Edmonton beat Montreal 50 to 27. We've already had more than half of that total chalked up on the board here at the Sky Dome. I, I can't recall uh, such a wide open football game, regular season, playoff, or Grey Cup. It doesn't matter. The ball's just moved up and down the field. And the strange part, Don, think back to the first quarter statistics. Only two first downs for Saskatchewan. They only had the ball four minutes. Hamilton's in complete control. But boy, did they come to life the second quarter. Almost 500 passing yards so far by the two quarterbacks. Let's check their statistics. First of all, Hamilton quarterback Mike Kerrigan. He's only missed seven times. 203 passing yards and two touchdowns. One to Tony Champion, the other to Derek McAdoo. Kent Austin has hit on 12 of 22, 222 yards, 75 of those coming on one play. A touchdown throw to Jeff Fairholme. And as I said, we're closing in on 500 passing yards through the first 30 minutes of play. One of the things, too, that's helped Austin a little bit was the injury to Lance Shields. He has really gone to work on the corner. Yes, and that's something that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, if Shields is unable to continue, will exploit, I'm sure. Well, he's got to. We'll take a look at the replays. We're going to show you two of them. We're going to see Derek McAdoo's pass for the touchdown. Here's what we talk about. The blitz comes outside. Steve Crane can't get there. You've got to get up in Kerrigan's face, or he's going to find people open. You have your McAdoo wide open down the middle, right where Kerrigan can see him. Now, Narcisse's touchdown, on the other hand, He's one-on-one -on -one with Earl Winfield. The injury uh, position, look at the throw, right inside of him, he catches the ball, gets the feet down for the touchdown. So the blitz has got to come to Kerrigan's face, and they're going to continue to go after that corner. Something Hamilton has been able to do through the first half that Saskatchewan hasn't is establish a running game. Saskatchewan, no running game at all. Hamilton's defensive line is taking care of that. 
Well, it's a 27-22 Hamilton lead as we get set for the second half, but right now, let's join Scott O. All right, Don, it's been 23 years since the Rough Riders won the Grey Cup. They know it, their fans know it, and so we expect a strong second half from the Riders and from the Ticats who want to hang on to the lead. We'll return in a moment. Welcome back to the Sky Dome in Toronto, where we're rejoined by our game day experts, and our goal linebacker Don Moen is here to tell the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and their fans there is hope, and a lot of it, because you played in a Grey Cup game in 1983, in which your Argonauts trailed the BC Lions at the half, and you came back to get that ring that you have right there on your hand. There's no question about that, Scott. They have to feel positive about coming out in the second half, and I want to see them establish the running game. I think that'll open up the passing game even more. But uh, they've been coming back all year. They came back against Calgary. They came back last week against Edmonton. And they've got to feel really, really confident coming out in the second half that they can do it again. Yes, we also note that Saskatchewan trailed at the half of the Western Final against the Eskimos last week. And we know the outcome of that game. That's why they're here. Matt Dunnigan, a word from you on special teams. That's right. I thought the special teams were key in the first half. They had great kickoff returns on both sides of the ball. Paul Osbalson was perfect. He came up with his points when they needed him. I think you're going to see the special teams play a big factor in this game, especially if it stays this close at the end. What do you think the mood in the Hamilton Ticat dressing room was over halftime? I, I imagine they're excited. They, you know, anytime you're winning a football game, you got to feel good, especially the way things have been going. They've had some good plays defensively, just not many of them. The offense has just been. Uh, I guess on track, rolling from the get-go. So it's a situation where they're positive and so is Saskatchewan feeling they can come back. Yeah, but Don, they also have to be leery about the fact that Saskatchewan is creeping back into this game. Not just creeping back, Kent Austin's just getting warmed up towards the end of the half. There's no question about it. Hamilton knows that Saskatchewan has come back the last couple of weeks, and I know that the coaching staff of Hamilton is stressing that in the locker room right now. Okay, guys, once again, we thank you very much for your comments. Your first-hand knowledge was well worthwhile. Let's go back upstairs, Don. Scott, everyone expected a wide-open offensive display, but I don't think expectations were quite this high. I don't think anybody expected them to move up and down the field at will. I kind of thought everybody figured the defenses would have a little bit to say about it, but right now, the offenses are controlling the football game. We are 13 yards away from a record on kickoff returns, and Mark Nye is going to get it right here. to the 47 yard line ideal field position for the riders to start this second half a 31 yard run back by mark guy the statistical story of the first half 260 net yards for hamilton 235 for saskatchewan saskatchewan as we said at the half might attempt to establish a running game in this second half i think they should a little bit this should be a the draw play to milson jones when you send Tim McCray in motion to the wide side of the field, they like to come with a draw to Milson Jones. But the biggest thing I notice is number 28, Lance Shields, is back on the corner for Hamilton. And if he can go, it's going to really help that secondary to the Ticats. Further to that record, I mentioned the teams have combined for 250 kickoff return yards in the first half. Guy had 31, so that is now 281 kickoff return yards, a great cup record. Second and seven. Austin throws complete to McRae. He'll get a first down, taken out of bounds by Gordon. Second down and short. When you see that wide receiver, when you see the wide receiver come in motion from the outside, we're going to see it from the high. You can't really get a good look at it, but what they do is run Tim McRae out behind it. It's almost like a pick play. The linebacker can't get there to cover him. Lance Shields has returned, as Ron pointed out, to play that corner. Saskatchewan might attempt to find out just how healthy he is. Well, oh, you got to find out if he can move. Nelson Jones drives ahead inside the 50-yard line. Frank Robinson was there to make the tackle. Once again, on first down, that's two straight first downs. They've tried to run the football, so they are trying to establish that running game. And again, it's just a draw play to Nelson Jones. The lone member of the Rough Riders who has experienced Grey Cup success that was with the Edmonton Eskimos. Second and five. Austin looks over the middle. Algar's got it. If you give the quarterback time, they drop the linebackers out that time to a zone. 
If Austin has time to look around, Elgar will find a hole. And that's exactly what he did. He moves to the outside. Elgar comes down and he'll run the hook. And he keeps sliding. He slides inside to get away from Daryl Corbin. First and 10, Saskatchewan. The ball is at the Hamilton 38-yard line. Incomplete. McCray got tangled up with the linebacker, Peter Gaptopoulos. Took a little bit too long to get away from him. What they wanted is isolation. McCray on Giftopoulos. Giftopoulos actually tackled him. It drew a penalty flag. And it is going to be a call against the Ticats. Forward pass in the Hamilton number 90. First out. That's what we wanted to see coming into the game, Don. How will they handle McCray coming out of the backfield one-on-one? -on -one? See, he's wanted to throw it a lot earlier. He was forced to hold it because Giftopoulos grabbed McCray, so he had to take the hit. Deep throw for Guy. Incomplete. Lewis was defending against Guy as Kent Austin attempted to put it into the end zone. Guy did make the right move, too. When that ball's in the air, he saw it underthrown. He tried to cut back under Will Lewis and get it. He just couldn't get there. Something that Saskatchewan has been doing with quarterback Kent Austin through the first half and in the second. They're moving that pocket around. That defensive line of Hamilton, they'll know where you are if you drop back every time. Sometimes it helps you. You get outside, buy a little bit of time. McCray taken out of bounds by Corbin. He'll have a gain of two yards, but on third and seven, the Riders send out the field goal unit. What they do is clear out the right side of the Hamilton defense and then bring Tim McCray underneath, one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, forced Daryl Corbin to run with him. They got the ball to him, but they, they could, he couldn't get turned upfield to get the first down. In that second quarter, these teams scored 35 points. 21 by Saskatchewan, 14 Hamilton. The breakup record for points in the quarter, 27. Winnipeg scored that against Hamilton in 1984 in a 47-7 win. That ball hit the upright but went between them. It deflected off the upright and fell over the bar between the poles. This is Foster's Great Cup on CBC. There's an old expression that you have to be good to be lucky and lucky to be good. Dame Fortune certainly smiled on Dave Ridgway on that field goal attempt. That has brought the Saskatchewan Rough Riders with him too. But there have been occasions when the ball has bounced the other way as well when it has hit the uprights. Wally Zatilnik is hit as he hurdles his way into the 32-yard line. On the sidelines, let's join Scott O. Well, Don and Ron, just before the Saskatchewan defense took the field, I had a word with a couple of the Saskatchewan linebackers who told me they spent a lot of halftime talking about how to counter Mike Kerrigan's quick release. They say their gambling blitzing days may well be over here. Don't be surprised if they go back to their conventional defense they played for most of the season. Well, it was that gambling defense that carried them to victory over the Edmonton Eskimos in the Western Final last Sunday. Kerrigan does have that quick release. One of the prime reasons that Al Bruno decided to start him, anticipating the same type of defensive performance from Saskatchewan. McAdoo stopped at the 35-yard line, a pickup of two yards. It will be second and eight, Hamilton. The big thing that that what Scott says, it at least forced Mike Kerrigan to work the ball downfield by picking up five, six, seven. He won't get the big plays because they'll be in his own defense more. 1044 remaining in the third quarter. Kerrigan to Rocky Di Pietro. First down. Rashevich, the linebacker, forced the veteran Di Pietro out of bounds. When Glenn Suter is lined up to the wide side of the field, it forces the linebacker to be able to run with the inside receiver. He really can't do it. He's already lined up inside, and he's going to be about a step behind. And if you throw the ball on target, as Kerrigan did, you're going to get the completion. First and ten, just across the 45. Bit of a counteraction with McAdoo, but it didn't fool Chuck Klingbell. Vince Goldsmith got upfield, that forced him in close to the line of scrimmage, and then Klingbell is, is so powerful, he just got penetration and makes the hit. Out of Northern Michigan, a teammate of Bobby Jurison when he played at that school, and was recommended to the Rough Riders by Jurison 
And they were happy to have him around when James Curry walked up. Well, I think he did. It's hard to believe he didn't play before that. Him and Jerson coming out of the same school's teammates. That's two good ones. Second down pass for Champion. Don, you have a tendency in a zone defense to get lazy. Harry Skipper's coming back, looking inside, figuring they're going to throw it underneath. All of a sudden, as he stops, he just lays it outside. And then Champion goes and gets it. See, Skipper's looking inside of Estelle and allows him to go by him. Now, Suter has to come too far. You can't ask him to get that far out and make the play. 30 yards for Tony Champion. He has scored a Hamilton touchdown. It is first and 10 with Ticats at the Ryder 38-yard line. The pitch to McAdoo following the block of Jed Tonic. And now Wally Zatilny. And he'll pick up five yards. David Albright, the middle linebacker, came over to make the tackle. Glenn Suter's been lined up all over the field. Right now, though, all he's trying to do now is confuse Kerrigan. He moves all around, but he's lining up back in the middle, and he's going to be the first man to support the run. When they turn it inside, he should be there. He celebrated a birthday on Thursday, matching his uniform number. His teammates responded by taking him to the goalpost here at the Skydome. McAdoo couldn't hang on to that throw, and he's upset with himself, and well, he should be. And Mike Kerrigan knows this. If you go to the zone defense, when your backfield people check out of the backfield underneath, you just keep throwing it to them until they stop it. And they throw it to McAdoo, and he took his eyes off of it and dropped the football. 8.26 is the time remaining in the third quarter. This will be a 40-yard field goal attempt by Paul Osbaldiston. He's hit from 42 and 38, and now 40 yards. And again, the Ticats enjoy a five-point lead. 8-11 is the time remaining in the third quarter here at the Sky Dome. The Ticats lead by five with 8-11 remaining in the third quarter, and Foster's Lager in the Canadian Football League will honor the 77th Grey Cup's most valuable offensive, defensive, and Canadian players as Foster Grey Cup MVPs. Each of the MVPs will receive a handsome Eskimo sculpture provided by Molson Breweries. In addition, they will receive a wall clock courtesy of Hartwood Woodworking and Design Company and from Pentax, a state-of-the-art Pentax camcorder. Mark Guy with another exceptional return for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. A run back of 36 yards. Bill Henry made the tackle. And Ron, I know this. I wouldn't want the responsibility of choosing the outstanding performers in this game. No, the offense would be bad enough, but defensively, we got to have somebody do something. The way that offense is moving it up and down the field. Mark Guy doesn't catch many passes, but he's done a great job on kickoff returns today. He almost broke another one. First and 10 from the 51 yard line. This is McCray coming out of the backfield and finding some room. To the 42 of Hamilton. Stopped by Daryl Corbin and Frank Robinson. Now we'll take a look at this. This is kind of an intricate little thing Saskatchewan does. They'll bring Ray Elgard from the slot, from the left side. He'll come in. Now he comes in to hold the backer, and then Tim McCray just kind of slips out into that open area. And look at that move. Turn up field, make a miss, and just head to the goal line. That's the overhead view we are able to provide you with because of the Sky Dome roof. Tim McRae, the ball carrier, taking that pitch for about six more. The way this game is going, the team that has the ball last may very well win. Listen to this statistic. Hamilton has scored on six of its last eight possessions. Saskatchewan has scored on four of its last five possessions. That's the way that, that second quarter was unbelievable. This, this quarter started out with two field goals, but I think they're just warming up again. They want to see what adjustments were made at the half. That's one adjustment the Ticats made. They sent Corbin after Austin. Well, we talked in the opening about Daryl Corbin. Daryl Corbin is a tremendous outside linebacker today. He'll be in the middle. He'll be a defensive end. What they're trying to do is get those mismatches. You see him stepping up in there, coming around the corner. Milson Jones doesn't block him. He misses him. And as Austin tries to scramble, Corbin makes the hit. 
That's something unusual for Milson Jones to miss a block. He's one of the better blocking fullbacks in the league. He sure is, but it's a little bit of a mismatch. He's not quite as tall as Corbin, and Corbin gets that head of speed up, head of steam. You can't slow him down that fast. Milson is more of a finesse blocker rather than a power blocker. Baker trying to angle it out of bounds. What a beautiful kick at the three-yard line. You know, he's been criticized at various times throughout this season because of his inconsistency. He has responded to the pressure and the challenge of a Grey Cup. Well, if you're going to have to come up big, this is the time to do it. I know I've been on him a little bit this year when he shanks a 10, 12, 15-yarder. But today he has boomed them and he has kicked one out of bounds at the seven and now one out of bounds at about the three. Can't ask for anything better. A 48-yard kick and angling it out of bounds at the three-yard line. An ideal kick. Now, if Hamilton's going to move it, if Saskatchewan are going to play that normal style defense, they've got to drive 107 yards. Well, the key when Saskatchewan lines up, follow Glenn Suter, the safety. Suter this time stays back in his normal position. McAdoo gets the ball, fumbles it, and managed to get it back. Well, that was a great job by Vince Goldsmith coming around the block by Jed Tommy to get into the backfield and the ball bounced free. Very fortunate to get it back. Well, you see the linebackers trying to come across to get in on the play. The play's taking place on the other side, but the ball bounces around and they do get it back. Second and 10 from the three yard line. Kerrigan going for it all with Satilne. He can't catch up with it. Well, we said that going into the football game, Harry Skipper was going to have to have a big game. He's a gambler, and so far his gambling has hurt him. The only thing that saved it there, the overthrow, because Satilne had him again. 5-15 remains in the third quarter. Saskatchewan will get the ball back. Most likely... On the Hamilton side of midfield, unless Paul Osbaldiston can launch what would perhaps be a career punt from the end zone. Paul Osbaldiston's about a 41-yard kicker. That should be about his average. And if he's going to kick is better than he has, he's already at 47, but he would really have to hit this one. He's standing 11 yards deep in the end zone, a high snap. He's going to give up the safety touch with Steve Wiggins on top of him. Will kick off. So 454 remains in the third quarter. This is Foster's Grey Cup on CBC. With that safety touch, it's now a three-point game, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats are forced to kick off. Paul Osbaldiston gets the signal, and he sends it deep to Tim McRae at the 12-yard line. McRae is stopped at the 33. And that's where Saskatchewan will scrimmage first and 10. 55,000 spectators at the Sky Dome in Toronto. And that's the view from one of the seats way up in level five. That may be the absolute highest seat under the roof. You know, you get a heck of a view from up there. You'll see that, well, it is that Sky Dome camera is what you're seeing because you're going to get look right down on top of it. About 250 feet up. Tim McRae hit at the 35-yard line and thrown back. That will be a gain of about two yards. Now, just prior to that safety touch, you may recall seeing Paul Osbaldiston talking with Al Bruno at the Hamilton bench. Do you suppose, Ron, they were at all discussing the conceding of a safety touch? I wouldn't think that this give it up. I think you be careful if there's any question, give it up. I could see that, but I don't think they tried to look like the high snap. He changed his mind and didn't kick it. No way, Second and eight. Lorenz tried to get there. He couldn't, but the pass is completed. And Narcisse is heading for the end zone. You don't do it any better, Don. Don Narcisse just ran a simple hook pattern, and Austin threaded this ball right past Frank Robinson. Watch Narcisse, just a simple hook, 
Now watch that ball in the air. Good concentration. Frank Robinson jumped, couldn't get it. And now it's just speed. He ran out of gas over here a little bit, but he's ran many miles today. That is a big, big play. Donald Narcisse had eyes in the end zone. He didn't make it all the way, but 52 yards will do nicely. Oh, you take that every time. That, that's just a well-thrown football by Austin. Into the hole. Frank Robinson gave everything he had. He jumped again. He couldn't hit it. And Narcisse adjusted to it on the run, and then you saw the end result. And there's a delay as trainer Ray Jones comes out to look after a Hamilton player. Donald Narcisse with his fourth catch, 52 yards the gain. He has scored a touchdown, and he's certainly a candidate for one of those Foster's awards. He turned back to the inside. Now he's going to try to get Will Lewis out of position. The guy that's going to get him, Lewis, holds him up a little bit, drags him. He finally breaks away, forces him to go out of bounds when Corbin hits him. And there's an injured ball player down there on Hamilton. I don't know who it is. It's, it's Corbin, Corbin who is hurt. And that obviously took place as a result of the tackle he made on Donald Narcisse. Darrell Corbin, 6'2", 225 pounds. Excellent speed. Just excellent. Very well built. Big shoulders. Got sprinter's legs. And he can run. He and Darrell Patterson have played that middle linebacking spot for the Ticats throughout the year. They feel that Corbin is stronger against the run. Darrell Patterson played when Corbin got hurt in a preseason game out in Winnipeg, I believe, and he was off the roster, so they had to move Darrell Patterson inside. But as you're right, he is very much the physical of the two, and he's better against the run. Ed Gattavecas has replaced Corbin at that linebacking position. First and 10, Saskatchewan from the 23. 3-14 remaining in the third quarter. The Riders trail by three. Knocked away, penalty fly. The intended receiver, Rockford, will be charged with pass interference. It will be first and goal from the one. Boy, a good, good fake by Ken Austin in the backfield to hold everybody. And while he's doing that, Elgard is running. Forward pass interference. Hamilton 18 in the end zone. First down. The bad part here, Sonny Gordon needs the confidence that Rockford will get there. He was beaten, but Rockford went a long way with the ball in the air, but Gordon interfered with him, and it puts it at the one. And the Riders now with a chance to take the lead for the first time. They've got it. Tim McCray, but there's a penalty fly. Offside Hamilton, the Riders are in front. Ryder Pride is alive and flourishing under the Sky Dome as Saskatchewan has moved in front, 33-30. They just keep coming, you know, that they've come back as we heard at halftime from Donnie Moan and Matt Dunnigan. We've talked about it the last three or four weeks. It's been that way, so they know how to do it. David Ridgway with the point after. And Saskatchewan enjoys a four-point advantage with 2.51 remaining in this third quarter. They try to get this ball into the end zone behind Roger Robdag and Ken Moore and Anderson. He's not going to get there, so he has to bounce back to the inside. Now, Corbin and Frank Robinson are there, but he breaks the plane of that last white line, and it's a touchdown. Start in behind them, and then run wherever you see daylight. What do you call that blocking call for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders? Man blocking. Man closest to you, fire out, knock him off the line of scrimmage, and allow a good running back hey, like Tim McCray to find the ball. hole and do the rest. The leading all-purpose back in the Canadian Football League this year, over 1,000 yards as a runner, 75 pass receptions, and he also handles kickoff returns for Saskatchewan. He does a little bit of everything. I've even seen him covering kickoffs for him this year when they had all the injury problems. He said that the Grey Cup scoring record, 77 points, established in 1956. Edmonton 50-27 over Montreal. We've got 64 on the board with still better than a quarter remaining. 
Derek McAdoo returns the ball to the 35. Tim McRae, the man who put it in the end zone after that pass interference call against Sonny Gordon working against Ray Elgar. Brian Wallen and Sean Daniels and Steve Rastovich and Larry Hogue on special teams today seem to be everywhere, and that time again, it was Walling in on the hit. 64 total points is what Winnipeg and Hamilton scored. That was 1984. Oh, Tony Champion takes that ball out of bounds. And fortunately for Champion, he's okay. He collided with one of the carts on the sideline. But it is well padded, and he was fortunate that he was able to bounce off. He got six yards on the play. If the Riders are going to play the zone defense, Kerrigan's going to have to be patient. That pass will be there. The defensive philosophy is five yards and a headache. You're going to catch it, but you're going to pay. They wasn't counting on help down on the field. Usually it's the hit that gets you. Second and four, and it is McAdoo. Wrapped up for a loss by Eddie Lowe. We talked about Eddie Lowe at the start of the game as one of those defensive keys. Take a look at the speed of Eddie Lowe. We wondered how they would cover McAdoo coming out of the backfield. Watch Kerrigan throw it to the left of the screen. Watch that green jersey coming, number 42. You take on a good back in open field, and you're able to bring him down. That is one heck of a job. Eddie Lowe has done his job. Paul Osbaldiston will attempt to do his, standing at the 25-yard line. Ray Robertus. Centering the ball the last time in the end zone. Remember it was a high snap that his ball just was forced to pull down This one right on target The kick bounces picked up by Richie Hall And he stopped at the 36 Sam Oaks is the man who brought down the Saskatchewan punt returner Richie Hall with 132 left in the third quarter well, Ken Austin was slow starting, but he hasn't messed around once that second quarter started. He sort of has figured it out, and he has been moving the football. Now yeah, Bruno can only hope now that his defense can figure out some way of stopping Ken Austin. Darrell Corbin is back in there, and McCray gets the call. There's a penalty fly. Frank Robinson made the stop. Tim Lorenz made the initial penetration. You get that penetration when you pull people like that. You can't go outside. You don't have any choice but to turn back in. Frank Robinson is a good linebacker. Holding. Saskatchewan 64 is declined. Second down. So when that play turns back in, Robinson's going right with the pulling lineman. He's there to make the hit. Ken Moore, who had that penalty called against him, initially came into the Canadian Football League as a tight end and he switched to a fullback he played defensive tackle some linebacker and now he's finally found a spot at offensive tackle Mark Dye is open For 52 yards, Mark Dye, the other wide up, makes one for another 52 yards. Well, they've gone after him. They've tried to get Mark deep on uh, Will Lewis. Last time he had good coverage. This time he got behind him. And again, Rockford had to come from the middle of the field to make the player. It was seven. First and ten from the 22 of Hamilton. This could be the final play of the third quarter. Out of the backfield, Tim McRae takes the throw inside the ten. the final play of the third quarter in this most exciting 1989 Grey Cup game at the Sky Dome. The 
start the fourth quarter, the Rough Riders, leading by four, are looking for more. They have scored touchdowns in each of the last three times they've scrimmaged inside the 20-yard line. First and goal from the nine. The blitz was coming from the outside. Tim Lorenz couldn't make the tackle, but he forced Kent Austin into the arms of Blanton. If you can get upfield on that quarterback and force him to step inside, we'll get a look. Here it comes. Outside pressure. He has to step up. When he does, Ronnie Glanton's going to be there. They've got the defense of people to do it. They just haven't been able to do it today. Saskatchewan's done a good job, as has their line. But it's going to come down to who gets the quarterback is going to win this football game. Glanton was one of the dominant players in last Sunday's Eastern Final. It's second and goal. Austin throws to the end zone. Fairholm got turned around and couldn't retrace his steps. Good pressure again on Austin. Tried to come to the backside. Come sprint to your right. Get Rockford to come over here with you. Then go one-on-one -on -one backside. He just had to throw it away. He couldn't hold it much longer. He had to hope Fairholm could adjust in the air. A David Ridgeway field goal attempt. From 25 yards out, Glenn Suter is holding. It's good. And Saskatchewan extends the lead to seven points. The Rough Riders with only one Grey Cup victory to their credit, 1966. A game in which they defeated the Ottawa Rough Riders 29-14, and Ron Lancaster was the Ryder quarterback in that victory at Empire Stadium in Vancouver. I think this is a little more exciting game than ours. <laughs> well, you know, when you look back on it, it was more of a ball control style of game. This is see how far you can throw it. We'll send somebody down there to catch it. I mean, that, this is great offensive show. And I know the fans at the Sky Dome in 1989 are much more comfortable than they were at Empire <laughs> Stadium back in 1966. I would think so. I'll tell you, for the people that come down here for their first trip, they had to be absolutely amazed when they walk into the Sky Dome. It's a magnificent place. It's packed. That jumbotron's right up their alley. They gotta love it. Short kickoff, picked up by Gattabekas, and Hamilton will have great field position, first and ten from the 51-yard line. Let's compare the team statistically after three quarters of play. 21 first downs to 19. Total yards, 294 for Saskatchewan, 316 for Hamilton. And Hamilton still has the advantage in time of possession, but they trail by seven points. That's right. Kerrigan for DPS, intercepted by Suter. this ball the way Kerrigan can throw. Watch, it's going to flutter on him. And that ball's fluttering. Glenn Suter, we talk about Rockford going to the ball when it's in the air. That's Suter's job also, and Suter gets there in a hurry, goes off, picks it off. Watch Di Pietro. Now he's inside. Looks like he's open. But look at this. When that ball gets there, Suter gets there. The Riders have great field position again. First and ten from the 52. There's the pitch to Elgar, and he's going to throw it. And this one will be intercepted. Will Lewis picks it off. And you can see that one coming because Algar didn't get anywhere near what he wanted onto that football. Lewis waited for it. This is Foster's great up on CBC. We talked about that 1966 Saskatchewan Grey Cup victory. Alan Ford played on that team. He's general manager of this 1989 edition. And he caught a touchdown pass that game. Excessive turnovers. Dan Suter's interception. Will Lewis's interception. Kerrigan will put it in the air again. Estelle can't make the catch. Kerrigan was throwing into double coverage. Wiggins and Suter. 
Well, he really threw it into coverage that time, and Wiggins puts one heck of a hit on him. This is the interception by Lewis. Quarterbacks with a strong arm would have difficulty throwing the ball as far as Elgard attempted. For Mark Guy to catch that ball, it had to be thrown to about the five-yard line. I mean, that's too far for quarterbacks. You can't ask Elgard to do that. Will Lewis just sat back there, and it looked like he, you know, he saw it coming. He knew he couldn't throw it that far and made the interception. 12 29 remaining. It's second and 10. Harrigan flushed out of the pocket, being pursued by Lewis. He's in big trouble. Quindell has got him. In all the games we've done this year with Hamilton, Don, how many times have we said? If you can force Kerrigan to throw, pull it down and have to move around with it, the advantage goes to you. They're in a defense. They're going to get the pressure. He runs out of there. Here it comes. Lewis is after him. He's not. A, you're not going to throw the ball very far if you're right-handed that way. He needed to keep coming and take his chances. But that is the key. Don't allow him to throw on time. The second sack for Klingbell. Osbaldiston with a good third down punt out of the end zone. Taken by Richie Hall at the 47-yard line. He's tackled at the 42. 11.54 is the time remaining. First and 10, Saskatchewan on the sidelines. Let's join Scott Oak. Don Ryder Bright is obviously peaking here in the Sky Dome right now. Brian Hillebrand, a great game to watch, but one that I'm sure you wish you were playing in. Well, it's the hardest thing I ever did, stand on the sidelines here and watching this, but the boys are doing a great job, and we're going to bring the cup home to Saskatchewan. Feeling here is uh, euphoric, higher than I've ever seen it in the Saskatchewan team. Well, the feeling's great, but look around us. This is all Saskatchewan in here. Look at the green. It's great. Okay, thanks, Brian. Don? Thank you. Klingbell gets a quarterback sack for Saskatchewan. Grover Covington responds for Hamilton. The defense is starting to come back. Got you the team that can get to the quarterback, we said it before, they're going to win the football game. That front five of Hamilton, they've got to bring five. I don't think they can get there with four. That time they got the pressure on Austin. He really could not throw the football. They're not going to keep that man out of the backfield all afternoon. No, he's too good a football player. Second and 19, Nelson Jones upset at the 50-yard line. Corbin and Giftopoulos combined to bring down the Saskatchewan fullback and John Gregory's team sends out the punting unit. Well, I think Terry Baker will again try to kick this ball to the sideline. The biggest thing you don't want is kick it to the middle of the field. That's the hardest ones to cover for a covering team. Baker stands at the 45-yard line. Tilney and Winfield wait for it at the five. Low snap. Baker attempted to angle it to the sidelines. The Tilney prevents it from going out. And he runs it back to the 28. Steve Wiggins was there to make the tackle. Baker shakes his head, but he had to handle a low snap. And at the Racket Club in Regina, they're <laughs> celebrating. And... So you should. 10.36 remains, and the Riders lead by seven. Len Andonini. I wonder if he's dishing up free drinks this afternoon. Not Len. <laughs> <laughs> we know that from his <laughs> being our spotter. We know that. <laughs> I think he should, though. Derek McAdoo, the ball carrier, stopped at the 34-yard line. Bobby Jurison made the initial contact. Well, as you said a few moments back, the defensive defenses have started to come to the fore in this fourth quarter. And the other thing, too, Saskatchewan has gone back to the normal defense. They're making Kerrigan be patient. They're running the football, throwing the short passes. That's a good offense to play, but you can't make mistakes. Second and five. And the defense was ready for... Derek McAdoo, Gary Lewis is the man who made the tackle. And number 42 is right there with him. Gary Lewis, we talked about in the opening. He's a tremendous defensive lineman. He causes a lot of trouble in there, and we have, we know he has to get pressure to the quarterback inside 
but he's very difficult to block. So he's in there. Eddie Lowe's right behind him. And Derek McAdoo is down again. We talk about Mike Walker as being the premier defensive tackle in the CFL. Gary Lewis, a 6'3", 270-pounder out of Oklahoma State, isn't far behind. No, he isn't, and the big thing is he's a couple of years younger. You know, and Gary Lewis is, was playing with Ottawa, and then all of a sudden he ends up in the green and white, and I know those coaches talking to Ted Heath. He's happy to have him. McAdoo appears to be just winded. I guess the flow and Lewis hit you, make it a little tough to breathe. Mike McCarthy was able to sign McAdoo. A number of other scouts and personnel people were taking a look at him. He convinced him to come to the Canadian Football League and play with the Ticats. I think he's extremely happy he did. The big thing he wanted was the chance to play on a regular basis. They promised him they'd give him the opportunity to show what he could do. And he has shown it all year, and he's been a great acquisition for him. 9.38 remains. 37-30. Saskatchewan leads Hamilton. Osbaldiston stands at his own 20-yard line for this third down kick. Another good kick by Osbaldiston. Richie Hall takes it at the 28. And he's down at the 37. On the kicks, the Ticats gain on field position. Al Bruno and John Gregory may be having some palpitations as the play swings back and forth, but the 54,088 spectators in the Sky Dome are certainly enjoying it. We hope you at home are as well as you look in on CBC television. 54,088 is a Sky Dome record for a sporting event. Well, I, there's no doubt it's going to be a record with Saskatchewan here. <laughs> well, a few years back, they were talking about a dome That's over right. Taylor Field. Austin was looking for Tim McRae. It will be second and ten. If you're wondering about the Grey Cup record for attendance that occurred in 1977 in Montreal 68,318 at Olympic Stadium. And that game saw the Montreal Alouettes defeat the Edmonton Eskimos by a score of 41-6. A game that gained considerable recognition for the Alouettes using staples in their footwear so that they could get better traction on the icy you artificial see, turf at the Olympic Stadium. You see Ken Austin going down the field talking to Ray Elgard. What he's telling Elgard, when he comes off the line of scrimmage, he's got to see that inside linebacker. Frank Robinson blitz, number 43. He doesn't have anyone to block him. He's going to throw what they call a hot pattern. You look, I'll throw. Elgard never turned around. Terry Baker. A kick from his 23-yard line. Another fine punt by Baker. Winfield takes it at the 23. There's a reverse with Gordon. This block is set up. What an opportune call for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Al Bruno. Had Winfield reverse it to Sonny Gordon, not normally a member of the punt return unit. No, you usually like the ball in Earl Winfield's hands, but you see him start to the left. He will draw a crowd when he gets it. He slips it to Sonny Gordon. He picked up some excellent blocks downfield that allowed him to get that ball down into Saskatchewan territory. We have a Saskatchewan Rough Rider injured, Glenn Souter down on the field. Souter, key man. In that Saskatchewan defensive scheme. Sonny Gordon with a fine run back on that reverse on the third down punt. He goes by the name Sonny. His given names are Denman Preston. I didn't know that. I knew that. I knew Sonny wasn't his real name. <laughs> I did know that. Well, Suter's going to have to go out of the play, out of the game. That puts John Hoffman. Suter's a six-year veteran in an out of safety, and John Hoffman 
finishing his rookie year from the University of Saskatchewan. Well, that fella probably looks like a lot of people felt last night <laughs> part of the Great Cup festivities. And Suter will go out of the ball game. That means John Hoffman will have to come in in his replacement. This is only the second time in the game that Hamilton has started a drive in Saskatchewan territory, believe it or not. Lee Knight has a first down at the 34. In order for him to get Lee Knight, what they do now, they put Earl Winfield at the wide receiver spot, take out Richard Estelle. That, that way, then, the designated import Winfield is in for Estelle. Lee Knight, 6'3", Burlington Junior Tiger Cat, just goes down, hooks into the open area. Kerrigan finds him. He's got good hands. He's a big kid, and he's a good target. First and 10. Hamilton at the Saskatchewan, 34. Gary Lewis gets the quarterback sack. Well, Don, we talked about that inside pressure. We got a good look at it that time. Kerrigan barely had time to set up and throw the football. And you look back there, he's going down. All right, there it is. One, two, three, four, five-step drop. Number 79 is there. He didn't allow him the time to plant the feet and throw it. And after each play, you'll see the players look up at that video display board, 33 feet by 110 feet. And Gary Lewis obviously liked what he saw. Second and 16. The Kerrigan pass intended for champion incomplete. He is protesting that he was interfered with. Well, he might have a point. The main thing that happened is Skipper and Champion definitely got tangled up together, and Skipper ended up to be the one to go down on the Watch ground. The screen. Watch the screen. Well, we'll get a good look at it right here. Al Bruno's questioning it also. Champion going deep on Skipper. Gives him a step. Trying to go by him now. Skipper definitely grabs him, but then he's the one that ends up falling down, and Al Bruno may have every right to complain. Like Paul Osbaldiston with a field goal attempt at 47 yards. It's good. Thirty-seven, thirty-three, six twenty-one remaining. Saskatchewan in front. This is Foster's Great Cup on CBC. Hey. <laughs> this was the 47-yard field goal by Paul Osbaldiston. That has cut the Saskatchewan lead to four, but it was the play before that that really had Al Bruno upset. He thought that Tony Champion was interfered with by Harry Skipper. Tim McRae on the kickoff return waits for the block to form and then runs it back to the 37-yard line. Sonny Gordon was there to make the tackle. On the sidelines, Al Bruno was expressing his opinion on the call to one of the officials while we were away. But the officials saw no need for unsolicited advice. And he wasn't telling him nice <laughs> call either. <laughs> he was fortunate that he really didn't get a penalty. Well, he, I know he has a legitimate complaint, but you really can't holler at him like that. They will get you. But he was right. Austin, with time, looks for Fairholm incomplete. 5.55 remains. 37-33, Saskatchewan leads. That's the first time today they've missed that particular pattern. They bring that slot back, and now it's Fairholm again. He comes on like he's going to come to the inside, forces Sonny Gordon in, and then he swings right back out underneath it, and Austin just got it out a little too far. Those gloves, many of the receivers and defensive backs wear are glass cutters gloves. has a first down for Saskatchewan. You remember the last series of down when Ray Elgar did not look on the blitz. Ellingson does. He's lined up at that slot back position and when he looks to the inside he sees that linebacker disappear. He looks right now. Jumps inside of Stephen Jordan. Makes the catch. First down. And the Duke, as he is nicknamed, is in there in place of Ray Elgar at that slot back position. First and ten from the 52. They fake the draw, and now they throw to James Ellingson. He will get about six more. Stephen Jordan is there to make the tackle. They start inside, they go back outside. This time he comes inside and keeps right on going. 
That kind of freezes Stephen Jordan. He's underneath. He'll make the catch. Jordan's with him. When that ball's caught, he's in good position to come up and make the hit, limit the game to about six yards. Stephen Jordan, CFL Rookie of the Year, is a couple of snakes as pets, one of them a boa constrictor. One of the reasons he has problems trying to find a roommate. Don Narcisse with a catch for a first down at the 37. Well, again, you don't throw it any better. Again, up the seam with the slot back. The back goes in the flat, and Narcisse just comes into the hole. And watch Austin throw the football right on the money. Down, plant that outside foot, and come back to it. Sonny Gordon's in the flat. You see Frank Robinson's covering the slot. The hole was to Narcisse, and Austin found it. And he threw that pass with Grover Covington in his face. Only Sam Echeverry has passed for more in a Grey Cup game. 508 yards in 1955. Tim McRae gets about eight. And the Riders have to be happy with the way they have maintained possession and put this drive together. Right now, you take a look up at the clock and see 337 and counting. You got a four-point lead. If you can take your time, make no mistakes, methodically put this ball in the end zone, I think everything goes your favor from there on. 3.27 remaining, second and three, Saskatchewan. They line up in that short yardage offense, and they get the ball to Tim McRae. That will be close to the first down. Mike Walker pulled down the Saskatchewan all-purpose back. This time he goes in behind Bob Foley and Vic Stevenson. Just turn and hand it off. Blow him off the line of scrimmage and let him do the rest. And he gets it downfield for the first down. You mentioned Bob Foley's name. The veteran offensive lineman moved into the spot vacated by Brian Ellerbrun, who went out with an injury. And we heard earlier from Brian talking with Scott. 2.54 remains. This is Foster's Grey Cup on CBC. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders don't get here often, but when they do play in a Grey Cup game, excitement usually follows. That's right. They don't get here too often, as you said, Don, but what a place to play it. I, I'm glad they came. If they're going to come, come to the one that's indoors. Kent Austin. Over the middle. Ray Algard has a first down at the 15. Austin's played very, very well all day. But that ball again, he's thrown three or four or five passes today that had to be thrown just right. Elgard, we see, favoring his knee. He was pointing at it when he was on, his, on the one he's pointing at the one he's resting on. But watch Elgard get into the hole, but watch the football. Pass the linebacker down into the hole before Frank Robinson and Stephen Jordan can get there. You don't throw it any better. And, of course, Elgard was out of the Saskatchewan lineup in the last half of the season as the result of a knee injury. That's the 13th first down in the second half for Saskatchewan. Hamilton has only had three in the second half. And when they changed that defense and went to the conservative one, make them earn it, they have had their problems. First and ten, handoff inside to Milson Jones. He tries to break free, but is prevented from doing so after a gain of about three. 2.20 is the time left to play. 37-33, Saskatchewan in front. A brilliant performance by Saskatchewan quarterback Kent Austin this afternoon. Second and seven. Austin looks to the end zone. Mark Nye is out of bounds. Will Lewis was running with him. That's the, the referee back there makes a proper call. They throw that ball deep into the end zone. Will Lewis goes to the football very well, but he wasn't pushed out of bounds. His momentum when he caught it put him out of bounds. Here comes the ball. Watch Will Lewis. Excellent catch. First thing that landed on the ground, it looked like he landed on the legs of Mark Guy when he had control of it. From the 20-yard line, David Ridgway will attempt another field goal. And he puts it through. And Saskatchewan again leads by seven with 1.58 left to play.
Well, the Riders in 1966 engraved their name on the Grey Cup, the only time Saskatchewan has done so. They hope they'll do it again in 1989, and they're 158 away from taking that cherished trophy back to Regina. Kerrigan over the middle to Lee Knight. Could we have overtime? That possibility certainly exists. First and 10, Hamilton. They are at their own 53 with 150 left to play. Going to go to the hurry up offense, force Saskatchewan to hurry, allow them to save as much time as possible. A good block by Jed Tommy that time for Lee Knight. Rocky Di Pietro. A gain of eight. Al Bruno glances up at the clock. 142 the time remaining. His tie cats in a hurry up offense. We'll look at that catch of Di Pietro again. Just down and out, throw it low. If he doesn't get it, nobody does. Richie Hall had good position. And he got there to make the tackle. The clock running, the handoff to McAdoo. He's got the first down and more. Vince Goldsmith finally stops him, and the clock is stopped at 132. But play will be whistled in as soon as the teams move up over the ball. Got a Saskatchewan injury, that's why the clock is stopped. Steve Crane, the injured Saskatchewan player. You know, we talked about the versatility of Ken Moore and the number of different positions he has played. Steve Crane, in his college career, played a variety of positions. Now he played at Acadia University. He kept playing around to try to find his spot, and he, now he's at the size at 6'2", 205 pounds. He's good enough, and he's going to be a little bit bigger. He's a good size for a linebacker. You know, the Canadian Football League goes under the magnifying glass more than usual during Grey Cup week. And positive things always seem to emerge. And this exciting football we have witnessed again today has not only entertained the capacity crowd inside the Sky Dome, but millions of you viewers watching on television. We've also witnessed the passion of Saskatchewan football fans, the pride, Probably unmatched anywhere in the country. Many positives, and focusing on them should be the priority of the man who was named commissioner to succeed Bill Baker. Kerrigan looking, incomplete, a penalty fly. earlier on what he thought should have been a pass Watch interference call skipper against Tony Champion he feels even stronger about that non call on this most recent play skipper on champion second and 10 from the 42 yard line 119 remaining Kerrigan for Winfield this time there is a fly Winfield's facing back to the football. When Wiggins is coming that way, 
He must turn and look Forward for the ball. Forward pass interference. Saskatchewan number 24. First down. He doesn't do it. And when Winfield goes to catch it, he'll run into him. We'll get a good look at it. Watch it. Winfield wants to catch. Wiggins is he's just not going to allow him to get there. It's got to be called face guarding. The ball is at the 12. First and 10. 113 the time remaining. McAdoo the ball carrier. He gets inside the 10. A gain of three. 108 is the time left to play. The Tie Cats trail by a converted touchdown. 40 to 33, Saskatchewan leads. Hey, we'll go kick off return and we get to hurry up off there. 1961, the only overtime game in Grey Cup history. Winnipeg defeating Hamilton 21 14 as Kenny Plain in overtime ran it in for the major score. 56 seconds remaining. Kerrigan is in trouble, gets away, throws, incomplete. Intended for Rocky Di Pietro. Well, you fans in Regina certainly reacted positively to that one. Fans in Hamilton, not the same way. Rocky run to the outside. Now when Kerrigan gets in trouble, he tries to come back in. Wiggins got a hold of him again. It's all she wrote. 48 seconds remaining. Third down. Hamilton into the end zone. Touchdown! should go to champion. He's done it for you all year, but I'm going to tell you, we got a perfect look at that play. I can't believe he caught that ball. That's a great catch. We are tied at 40 with 44 seconds left to play. Watch the ball. It's over the wrong shoulder, but watch the ability of champion. Jumps, spins in the air, and pulls it down. Yeah, don't do it any better. What a great catch. See, Skipper's not going to try to let him get around him and upfield. Kerrigan threw it early, but look at Champion go get the ball. And that's why he was the Eastern nominee as outstanding player. And Al Bruno and the Tie Cats celebrate as they have come back to tie with 44 seconds left. And this 1989 Grey Cup game has established a record for points scored 80 have been put on the board, and there are more to come. Well, you said, Don, the team that had the ball last could win it. Saskatchewan's got 44 seconds to get downfield. But, boy, that was a third down situation. That's a great catch. Well executed. Tim McRae on the return. Stopped at the 36-yard line. Daryl Corbin made the tackle, and it appears that Tony Champion may have re-injured his ribs. What a courageous game he has played. He was hurt early and has continued to perform. Oh, we got to take another look at this. Watch, watch the ability of Tony Champion. He jumps, spins in the air, extends himself out, and pulls it in. Oh, that's a great catch. You got to be careful right now if you're Saskatchewan. You don't want to turn it over down here and give us Baldwin a shot at it, but you got to try to win it, too. Austin going deep for Narcisse. Penalty fly. He was bumped by Lance Shields at the 49 of Hamilton. 32 seconds is the time remaining. Now this penalty fly. Uncatchable. No foul. The ball was uncatchable. Second down. That's right. He couldn't have got that ball. I don't care what he does. Narcisse went down the field. Started to go deep. That's what Austin saw. Then Narcisse cut it off inside. The ball was like 15, 20 yards over his head. And he wasn't going to get that one. 
Well the joy of Saskatchewan fans turns to chagrin with the announcement by referee David Ewell that that ball was uncatchable as a result no penalty. It's second and ten. Austin to the sidelines for Elgar. He's got it at midfield. 25 seconds the time remaining. One more first down and they could be within the field goal range of David Ridgway. I, I would figure just looking at it from there to 54, 5, 10, 15 yards would make it a cinch. Excellent throw. Again, over the top of the linebacker, Pete Giftopoulos, and down into the hole. And then Elgard steps out of bounds. Great throw. 23 seconds, the clock running, the time remaining. Mark Dye hangs on. Oh. Nineteen seconds left. Despite the hit of two defenders, Mark Dye was able to hang on to that football. One-on-one -on -one coverage. The clock is running, 19 seconds. I think they're going to run this football. No, they're not either. Sideline pattern, another first down with Mark Dye. And this is definitely within the range of David Ridgway. Nine seconds is the time left. The man on the spot. An opportunity to emerge as the Saskatchewan hero, number 36. John Gregory is telling him to take the snap. Put it where you want it on the field and kneel down with it to get Ridgeway the ideal spot to kick from. He's just don't let the clock run out on you. The ball was out of bounds, so it won't start until the snap, but it's well within range. And that takes it down to seven seconds. And here comes Ridgeway. Boy, Ken Austin's had a fabulous day throwing that football today. Mark Guy, who's never saw all year, but he has made some key catches and some excellent kick returns. I would say there are any number of a dozen players who have had a fabulous day under the Sky Dome in this 1989 Grey Cup game. And it could all come down to this field goal try by David Ridgway. It will be a 34-yard, 35-yard attempt. Almost the reverse with the score not nearly as high of what the Riders and Ty Cats provided in 1972 when Ian Sunder kicked that last play field goal, giving Hamilton a 13-10 victory. And you as a member of that Saskatchewan team, Ron Lancaster, all you could do was stand there and watch. That's all you can do. You know, you, you stand on that sideline, and if that ball's pinned and kicked properly, it will kind of flip nice and lazy, and if this goes through, there's going to be about three seconds left on the clock. That's all. Osbaldiston and Steve Jackson are in the end zone. The timeout has been called by Hamilton in the event that the field goal try by Ridgeway should be wrong. Why? They will be kicking the ball out of the end zone. Well, they sure will. The thing is, will he reach the end zone line? He may kick it all the way out for a single point if he misses. But they're going to try to prevent that, but well within his range. If he kicks it, he should split those uprights. A 35-yard attempt for David Ridgway. It's up. It's good. either way and that's just what it come down to well Al Bruno's 
I really don't know what he's thinking. They're going to make him kick it off. What he's asking is you're going to have to do it now. I mean, there's, you can't even get good field position. You must put it in the end zone. He's going to have Zatilny. I'm looking for Winfield is who I'm looking for. Maybe a reverse of Sunka. There's got to be something coming. Well, they, there will be something coming by the Ticats. Saskatchewan will they squib kick it? I would think so. I don't see any reason to kick that ball down the field. Put it on the ground, just kick it ahead about 15 yards. Make one of those guys up front field it, run down and cover him, and the game's over. Both coaches yelling at their players, shouting last minute instructions, last second instructions to be more precise, just two remaining on the clock. Yeah, just squib it ahead. You got linemen up in front. Kicking it to the sidelines into the hole. Picked up there by Steve Jackson. He's going to return the kick. And it's picked up by Suter. He runs it out of bounds. The Riders have won it. John Gregory has done what only Eagle Keys has been able to do before previously in Saskatchewan, and that's win a Grey Cup. Well, you've got to give credit. We talked all week that these two teams are very even. We said it would come down to three points, and it did. You said the team that had the ball last would win. That's just the way it come down. Two good football teams, 50-some thousand people are going to go away happy. Naturally, the green guys are more happy, but it's been a great, great day for football. I didn't realize it would be quite that prophetic when I said the team that had the ball last would win. But that indeed was the case. John Gregory and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have touched off a wild celebration, I'm sure, in Regina. And right now, let's join Scott Oak. All right, Don, I'm here at center field with the hero of this game, Dave Ridgway. Now, Dave, I said to you, late in the third quarter, do you have an inkling you'll be the hero of this game? And what did you tell me? Well, I'd rather not have had that inkling, but... <laughs> Things had to go our way because that's the first one that I banked in off the upright in about 12 years. So, you saw that as a good omen. It had to be. Now, the question here is obvious. What were the thoughts in your mind as you went up there to kick that 35 yarder? It was within my range. You know, you got to go on the field, you got to make those kinds. That's all I can tell you. What's this victory mean, Dave? You want to dedicate it to somebody? Yeah, I want to dedicate this to the people of Saskatchewan because they've hung with us for an awful long time. And I'll tell you what, probably nobody other than the players deserves it as much all right we're looking at the winning kick right now tell us what you thought again i didn't think anything i you know just line it up uh like i said it's within your range just go through make everything mechanical you weren't too happy when you made it <laughs> i tell you what I, someone's gonna have to pull me out of a gutter tonight <laughs> <laughs> a night of celebration for you guys okay dave ridgeway thanks very much thank and you. congratulations it's your day thanks scott thank you John Gregory following the flight of the football on the Dave Ridgeway field goal and then celebrating a 43-40 Saskatchewan win over the Hamilton Tiger Cats. You know, it was 15 years from 1951 to 66, a long period for Grey Cup appearances for the Rough Riders. They won it. 13 years from 1976 to 1989, their last Grey Cup appearance, they've won it again. Scott? All right, Don, now I'm with Roger Aldag. We're caught in the middle of this furious Saskatchewan celebration. Roger, you waited 13 years for this, and somehow I suspect the wait seemed worthwhile today. I'm just, I'm just so happy. I'd just like to say hello to my mom, my brother, my brother and sisters. And I love them, and it's just all for everybody, and it's just super. It's for Gull Lake in particular, isn't everybody it? Everybody in Gull Lake, they're a great bunch of guys, and have a great time, and we're bringing it around home, baby! Okay, get up there for the uh, presentation. Don? Well, it's only happened once before, and it will take place before a large crowd here at the Sky Dome and a vast television audience, the presentation of the 1989 Grey Cup. At center field, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, au centre du terrain, le président directeur général de la Ligue canadienne de football, Mr. Roy McMurtry, CFL chairman and chief executive officer, and President Bill Baker, the President, will now present the Grey Cup with the 1989 CFL champion. Vont présenter la Coupe Grey au champion de la Ligue canadienne 1989, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders.
for those Saskatchewan fans, many of them who made a 38-hour trip by bus to Toronto to take in the Grey Cup game. The long road and the long trip. All worthwhile now. Well, it sure is. You know, it's great to see it go to Saskatchewan from the standpoint of there's any fans that have stuck with them through many, many years, and yet every year the attendance level is great. Wait till next year. Well, next year has arrived for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Scott? Question if Ken Austin should have started this game. I think we just saw the answer. How do you feel? I just feel great. You know, I appreciate John giving me the start. It's something that I felt like I deserved, but it wasn't my victory. It was a total team effort. Well, Dave Ridgway was a hero, and so were you. You know, I talked to Matt Dunningham at the half. He was one of our game day experts, and uh, he said, Mike Harrigan's playing great, but you watch. Ken Austin is just warming up, and you were towards the end of that first half. Well, yeah, towards the end of the first half, I started to get some protection, and I started to get on the mark with my passes. And, uh, you know, it was a long time coming. The whole first quarter was pretty rough. But the guys ran great routes, and they caught the ball for me in the line block. Well, Kent, you guys did it the whole season the hard way. You lost some key games. You made some mental errors. But uh, you were up when you had to be, in particular, today. Yeah, it's it's a credit to the guys and the, the kind of character we got throughout the team. We made a lot of comebacks at the end of ball games the last two years. Have you any idea, given that you're a relative newcomer to Saskatchewan, how much this win means to the people out there? Oh, I've got an idea, and I'm just so happy for everybody back in Regina and the whole province. And we got the best fans in the world. I just appreciate the support we had. Go ahead and say something to them. They're listening. Well, I just thanks everybody for supporting us all year round. We're bringing the Great Cup back. All right. That you are. Thank you, Ken. Don. Well, Saskatchewan becomes the first third place team since the 1970 Montreal Alouettes to win a Grey Cup. The Riders started the season in such fine form, winning four of their first five, then losing six of their next eight, and there was danger that they would not even make the playoffs. But indeed they did. They scored a major upset, knocking off the Edmonton Eskimos, a 16-2 team, in last week's Western Final. And they come into the Sky Dome to defeat the Hamilton Tiger Cats 43-40. In three consecutive football games, Grey Cup games, the Rough Riders have seen the outcome decided by three points. Twice previously, they were on the losing end, 13-10 to Hamilton in 1972, and 23-20 to Ottawa in 1976. This time around, they win it, 43-40, a field goal from 35 yards by David Ridgway with just two seconds left to play. And there are many Saskatchewan fans who will be anxious to get a hand on that Grey Cup. And you think in the marketing of the Rough Riders this winter, that trophy will be on display throughout the entire province? I would say if those people out there just relax and take the time and wait, it'll hit every city in Saskatchewan within the next three months. There's not one town that that won't appear in this winter. 16 points off the foot of David Ridgway, nine in the last quarter. Field goals of 25, 20, and the most important one of all, 35 yards. The North and in the side. Racket Club, the North Side Racket Club in Regina, like everywhere else, I'm sure, in the entire province, they are celebrating this Grey Cup victory by the Rough Riders. And these celebrations and the festivities in the province, I'm sure, will continue for many more days. Roger Alday, who was hurt and unable to play in that 1976 game. Just a raw rookie then, a center from the Regina Rams. He injured his wrist, was unable to snap the ball as the result the conversion to guard. And he has been one of the outstanding guards in the Canadian Football League ever since. Yeah, it's only fitting that he carries that thing off the field. He's waited a long time. And it is appropriate that a veteran such as Roger Alday who fought even when they lost in 76. Oh well, there will be many more opportunities. He had to wait 13 years to get this chance to hold that cherished trophy high. And to hold it high he does, along with other teammates here at the Sky Dome in Toronto in celebration of this 43-40 win. I don't think he's going to let anybody else carry that trophy up. 
I wouldn't if I was him. I, this is all he's ever wanted, is to play on a Grey Cup winner with Poli and Illibrin and Aldag, all teammates with the Regina Rams, all breaking in around the same time. It's great to see him carry it home. 1966, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders won their first. 1989, they win their second. We'll be back with our post-game celebration after this. Well, the term greatest is used excessively, but this may very well have been the greatest Grey Cup game ever played. It certainly is in the opinion of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and their fans, not only here in Toronto, all across the country, primarily in the province of Saskatchewan. And the 43-40 victory has touched off a celebration in the Saskatchewan Rough Rider dressing room. Any number of heroes, any number of people who could be congratulated and applauded for this victory. A solid team effort, as quarterback Kent Austin said, but there were individual stars. A lot of individual stars, but the big thing, Kent Austin made a good point. He started to get protection. If you get protection, you will be on target with your passes. And he made that point. He started to hit them, and when he get things going, he didn't stop. I said there were a number of individual stars. Who do you at home think are the recipients of the Foster's Grey Cup MVP awards? Let's go down to field level and find out. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we draw your attention once more to Center Field for more presentation and celebration. The Foster's Grey Cup Most Valuable Player Awards will be presented by CFL Chairman and Chief Executive Officer Roy McMurtry and Edward T. Conkel, Executive Chairman of Molson Breweries. La présentation des récompenses Foster aux joueurs les plus méritants par Messieurs Roy McMurtry et Edward T. Conkel. The Foster's Most Valuable Canadian, au meilleur joueur canadien, de la Saskatchewan, from Saskatchewan, number 36, le 36, Dave Ridgway. And now, the Foster's most valuable defensive player. Le joueur défensif par excellence de ce match de la Coupe Grey 1989. De la Saskatchewan. Le numéro 99, number 99, Charles Klingbell. And the winner of the Foster's most valuable offensive player. Le gagnant de la récompense aux joueurs par excellence à l'attaque de la Saskatchewan, le numéro 5, number 5, Ken Austin. Those are the selections. Kent Austin, Chuck Klingbell, and David Ridgway. Ridgway with 16 points, nine, field, nine points as the result of field goals in the fourth quarter. And the final one, the big one as far as Saskatchewan fans are concerned, from 35 yards away. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders, the 1989 Grey Cup champions, with a 43-40 win over Hamilton. Wasn't around Empire Stadium in 1966, the last time the Saskatchewan Rough Riders won the Grey Cup, but I can't imagine that the scene in the dressing room was any wilder than this. Bobby Jurison, oh. you don't have to say a thing. Just smile from here to here. I'd tell you what, it's a great victory uh, for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, for the province, for all the Dryden fans, and heck myself, I enjoy it just as much as anyone else. Does it come any sweeter than this? Not the way we came about it. You know, we had the four game skid in the season. We were nine and nine. We beat, uh, we beat Calgary. We went into Edmonton. They only gave us a chance to beat them. And then we come in here and we beat Hamilton. That just proves to show you what kind of ball club we have. Bobby, you had to make some key adjustments on defense at halftime. What did you do? Well, in the, in the first half, we really started coming out the way we played against Edmonton. We were blitzing the heck out of them. We were bringing everyone. And they caught us a few times. And hey, when you blitz, you're going to get caught. So we came in at halftime and said, hey, we're going to play our old type of defense, a defense that's worked, so that's what we went back to. Hey, one, that's the bottom line. Bobby, do you think the airport in Saskatchewan, in Regina, is big enough to hold all the fans oh, that are going to be there? Oh, 
I hope the city's still standing by the time we get back. I think half the city's here, though. I, you know, it's just a great thing for uh, Roger and Bob and the whole city, and I'm just happy. Bobby, you were around during a couple of the lean years. If you can, just put it in perspective what this great up means. Hey, I take a lot, you know. It, what does it mean? It means hard work for myself since I was five years old playing the game. For the Saskatchewan Riders, uh, it means a lot for, for the whole province from being on the Great Cup for so long. And it's just a tremendous asset to the players that were on this team and they made it all happen. Bobby, congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay. Standing on my left is Dave Albright. Dave, congratulations on a super victory. Thank you very much. It's a great feeling. Long season for us, but it kind of just, it was a storybook season. It kind of ended on a storybook note. Really a great feeling. Dave, they're calling this perhaps the greatest Grey Cup game ever played. You've got to be proud to have been involved. Ah, uh, you bet. <laughs> I haven't seen too many of them, but uh, I know it's the greatest one I ever saw. It's the greatest football game I've ever seen or been involved in. It was a great feeling. Now, fess up and be honest with me. Were there some doubts in this one? Well, I don't, uh, things were looking a little scary there for a while, but I don't think we ever really had doubts. What sort of adjustments did you make in the, the uh, halftime? Well, defensively, we kind of, we were in a gambling attack type style defense the first half, and that's kind of the way we went at it against Edmonton. It wasn't working real effectively. Oh, I think we're safe. Dave, enjoy the celebration. Let's go to Scott. All right, Steve, here in the Hamilton dressing room, one of the toughest jobs in uh, football today falls on the shoulders of Tony Champion, and that, that is to state the case for uh, the team that came up just a little bit short and what people are calling, with good reason, one of the greatest football games ever played. Tony, uh, you played the last quarter with broken ribs, you say? The whole game. <laughs> the whole game? <laughs> yeah, I broke them in the first, but just like I said, you know, like, this is a great cup game, and you have to go out there and uh, play your best at all times. And like I said, you know, like somebody could have shot me, and I was still going to play. I don't know if it's any consolation to you, but when you caught that touchdown pass in the end zone and it appeared to be a near impossible catch, but you made it, you must have felt as though you had done all you possibly could to get the Thai Cats a victory today. Well, I felt like I played the best I could under the circumstances. And like I said, I wouldn't take none of it back. And like I said, everybody was playing their best. You know, it's just like one of those things. You know, like I run, I rather lose by 100 points than lose by three, but that's the way it goes sometimes. And, you know, I'm going to congratulate Saskatchewan with a with a vengeance, but uh, they cone him back, should be cut, and the referee, he should be kicked out of the league, and uh, if the commissioner and nobody don't listen to me now, I don't, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, Tony, thank you very much, and uh, when you're an old guy, you'll be remembering this as uh, one of the greatest games ever played, and you were a big star in it. Thank you very much. Steve? I will, I will be remembering. Scott, with me now in the Rough Rider dressing room where the scene continues to be hectic and chaotic is the head coach of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, John Gregory. John, before I offer my congratulations and get a comment from me, I want to read a very special message we just received. I am delighted to extend my congratulations to the players, coaching staff, and management of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on winning a most exciting 1989 Grey Cup. Your victory culminates a hard-fought season and is most deserved. This celebration, which is just begun both in the locker room and back home in Saskatchewan must be sweet as it confirms bragging rights for an entire winner. May you each wear your Grey Cup ring proudly. Signed, the Right Honourable Prime Minister of Canada, Brian Mulroney. Oh, that's great. I, I really appreciate him sending us uh, that message. Uh, you know, he comes out to see us every now and out there, and I think he has a good time when he gets in the prairie. Coach, you had to make some adjustments in the halftime. What did you do? Well, we, we said uh, offensively what we had to do is hit our backs out of the backfield. And we felt that uh, they were open, that we could get the ball to them. Defensively, we, had, we changed our uh, front a little bit to try and stop the run. And uh, we changed our coverages uh, a bit also. We, we uh, tried to fool it a little bit different way in the second half on our coverages. What was the reason for the slow start? Geez, I didn't see a slow start <laughs> that game. I'll tell you what, uh, holy, what a, what a great football game, I'll tell you. Um, the CFL has had three tremendous great ch championships in a row. And what a great finish. Your reaction on the winning field goal. Oh, I tell you what, that was something. I mean, it's... Is that me? Oh, oh that's me. Good vertical, John. Good vertical. <laughs> There's still two seconds left. Now we got to get everybody under control. I, I thought we were going to get a penalty for uh, two, about 200 people on the... On the field. That champagne burns your eyes, by it the does, way. It does, doesn't it? I know from past experience. Yeah. What do you say to the fans in Saskatchewan who waited so long for this victory? Well, uh, I'm especially proud of this Grey Cup for the Saskatchewan fans. 
the ones that have hung in there for all those lean, lean years, and uh, they've just hung in there and just uh, been great, great people and fans. I, I really, our team appreciates it. I really appreciate it. I don't think the airport in Regina is going to be big enough. Well, I tell you what, I don't really care. I'm looking forward to seeing them all. Just a tremendous cap to a great season. One of your young fans who may be around for the next Grey Cup celebration. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> you had to do that. <laughs> that stuff gets in your eyes. It stings. It uh, feels good. feels good. Oh. You've waited a long time for this. Well, we sure have. Uh, like I say, I've only been there three years, and a lot of those fans have been there for years and years and years. But uh, it's, I guess, gal darn well, John, my congratulations and congratulations from Saskatchewan fans all over the country on a great game, a truly tremendous Grey Cup. Our coverage of the Grey Cup on CBC will continue from the Saskatchewan dressing room after this. The celebration continues here in the Saskatchewan Rough Riders dressing room after a most dramatic victory over the Hamilton Ticats, a last-second field goal from Dave Bridgeway. And Eddie Lowe is with me now. Eddie, how sweet it is. Yeah, it's been seven years for me, and uh, 14 for Roger Aldag, 12 for Bob Poley, seven years for Harry Skipping. It's just a great feeling because we went through some obstacles, but we never lost our faith in each other, and we came out and we won. You didn't lose faith in this team either in the second half. No, we came in at halftime, made some adjustments because we knew that they would get something on us. But we came in halftime, stopped blitzing them, and went to our basic defense. And hey, we hung in there. The offense kept us in in the first half. And we came out the second half and just turned things around. Eddie, congratulations on a super game and a well-deserved Grey Cup victory. Yes, yeah, a great feeling. Thank Eddie Lowe, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, with me now, the Premier of the province of Saskatchewan, Grant Devine, and his worship, Mayor Archer, from the Saskatchewan city of Regina. Uh, to you, first of all, Mr. Premier. Well, I'll tell you, it was just unbelievable when I handed my sweater, my jersey, to the Premier of Ontario and said, you know, you can have this for one day, and he took it. Unbelievable game, just unbelievable. The crowd here, the fans, the Saskatchewan fans, just let me say to them back home, you're the be very best fans any place in Canada, in the history of Canada. We're so proud of you and so proud of the Rough Riders today. Now, at this point, Mr. Politician, are you going to take credit for the victory? No, just glad to be here, just glad to be here. We cheered our heart out. So did the mayor, so did everybody. It's just great to be in this great cup. Your Worship, I w I'm sure you weren't around in 1966. Uh, you may have been as a fan, but uh, this one may be sweeter. You bet it is. I, I was around as a fan. I was in high school back in those days, but you know, this is something that's, that's really special. I've been on a mayor a year now, and this is uh, just uh, equivalent to getting elected a year ago. It's such a highlight, you know, and I want to pay tribute to a guy like Bob Morrow, the mayor of, of Hamilton. He's a, he's a real gentleman. I'm going out to Hamilton tomorrow to hand him the the city flag from Regina, and he's going to be flying that from the flag flag mast of the Hamilton City Hall for a week. So we'll be having a little uh, little payoff tomorrow as well. Is it too early to ask either of you gentlemen about the special celebrations I'm sure you've got planned? Well, we're going back uh, tomorrow, and everybody's going to be in Taylor Field around 5 o'clock, and we'll just have one of the finest celebrations you're going to see any place. But I'm sure the parties throughout Saskatchewan, and indeed across con the country tonight, are going to last for 24 hours or more. You know, there aren't too many corners in this country where rider pride isn't in evidence whenever Saskatchewan played. No, well, that's that's what I think was the real difference in the final analysis. Uh, we have something that uh, Hamilton doesn't have and never will have, and that's rider pride. And it, it really showed. It, it showed its way through, and uh, we brought the Grey Cup home. Congratulations to you both. Thanks I've got to get Al Ford in here now. Al Ford, you played for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in 1966 when you won one as a player. Now you win one as a GM, which is sweeter. Well, I got, I got one on this finger, now I'm going to get one over here. I'm just, I'm so proud of our players and our coaches, all the fans that have stayed with us so long. It's been 23 years, and we're back, and we're going to be back for a while. Hey, this GM's job's easy, isn't it? <laughs> well, they'll say, what are you going to do next year? We're going to win again. What the heck? <laughs> all right, now, Al, tell me what you were thinking when Ridgeway lined up to kick that field goal. I was thinking in, in 1972, I was standing in the end zone when Sunder kicked it to beat us. So I... I knew I, I'd been there before, and I knew Ridge's going to put it through. Have you seen a greater football game? Were you were you involved in one? Did you play in one? 
No, I, I mean, I, my, my, my stomach was turning right from the start of the game right to the end. Unbelievable. Came down to the final play like that. And it's just, it's just great for the league. A record crowd here. I mean, our fans, I bet they're driving up and down every every street in Saskatchewan right now. Al Ford, the Riders GM, the Mayor of Regina, and the Premier of the Province of Saskatchewan, Grant Devine. Thank you very much. Congratulations to you all. Right now, let's go back to Scotto. All right, Steve, I'm with Al Bruno, the head coach of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Al, no shame in the Tiger Cats effort today. It's unfortunate in the greatest game ever played in the Grey Cup that you had to come up short. Great game. We came back and tied them. It was a great offensive show. Uh, uh, right across Canada, they couldn't see a better Grey Cup game. Uh, but it's a damn shame. I'm so disappointed because both teams played hard. But the damn officiating dictated on that on that uh, call down there in the end zone on the interference call. We had the guy double team. A long penalty, put the ball on a one. Touchdown, seven points. That they, they, they shouldn't have had. Al, we're looking right now at uh, the reaction of you at the end of the game, and uh, you couldn't contain your exasperation. Well, I don't care what you say about anything, but we did a great job. The coach did a great job. But number 55, the official, I don't care who he is, the son of a gun, three times, he didn't make the proper call. We had an interception down in the end zone, and we thought he was out. But our, both teams played well. And I want the whole, but when you look at it realistically, it's a damn shame that it has to be decided on, on, a, on an official's call. Al, I know you feel bad for all your players to come up short in a brilliant game like this, but if you, if you feel worse for anybody, it has to be Tony Champion. Oh, yeah. Hey, you're talking about interference. They tackled him down there deep, and they didn't call it. Tony did a great job. He was playing hurt. All the guys played well. We lost last year for a while, and they took advantage of it. But, uh, but the guys pulled up, and they did well. You couldn't ask for a better game on both sides. I'm happy for John Gregory and his staff. They did a great job. I think our guys did a great job, too, and our staff. And it made for a hell of a football game. Thank you, Al. Appreciate your time. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Steve? Thank you, Scott. We're back in the Saskatchewan Rough Riders dressing room with Tim McRae. Tim, congratulations on a great game. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's well worth it. You know, we fought hard the whole game. And, you know, we, we just never give up. We got a bunch of veteran guys here. And, and you know, we, we won this for Roger. You know, it's, it's very sweet. And, you know, words can't really explain the way I feel right now. It's, it's, it's devastating right now. <laughs> You're going to feel cold because somebody just poured some yeah. liquid down yeah, your back. They did. They did. But that's okay. You know, it, it don't matter to me. Uh, we got that ring on the finger. So, you know, that's all that matters right now. Timmy, you're going to be back? Oh, yeah, I'll be back. As long as they want me here, I'll be here. So, you know, I'm, I, I love being here. You know, hey. I wouldn't miss this for the world next year. Congratulations, Tim right, McRae. Standing on my right-hand side, another Saskatchewan veteran, Ray Elgard. Ray, congratulations. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. A great feeling, boy. I'll tell you what, we played a hell of a game today. Everybody played great. It's been a great year. Glad to bring the cup home to Regina. There must have been some times this season when you doubted that you'd be here. Well, you know, in the past, we've we've had, you know, some fairly good seasons before, and we never made it this far. But last year, I think what happened with, with Winnipeg, really showed us that that you can you can just be okay during the season but if, if you're peaking at the right time you can win it all and when it came down to it, we we are the best team in the CFL right now do you think you may have been a team of destiny <clears throat> well I mean you could say that but I think we were more of a team of hard work you know a team that overcame stuff we had all sorts of injuries all sorts of guys played I mean we had a quarterback playing slot we had backup receivers playing we had backup I mean we had backup everything playing and, and guys just did a hell of a job. Uh, I think it was more hard work than, than anything. A lot is going to be said and a lot written about the way the defense played, but I thought the offense just kept coming. It never quit because you were down, you came from behind, you went in front, and then you had to come back again. Well, that's true. We, we never did quit, but neither did our defense. You know, our, our defense had some trouble in the start of the game, but they saw that we were able to move the ball and score points, so I think it gave them some strength to, that we kept coming back, and, and in the end, the defense won us a game. They shut them down in the second half. And we didn't do a hell of a lot on, as an offense in the second half, but the defense played good in that half. So, I mean, it's a total team effort. And, it, you know, if you look at how we scored by quarters, you'll see that. First half, we rang up the points. Second half, we shut them down defensively. Ray, have you got a special message for those fans in Saskatchewan that stayed with you through all the lean years? Oh, yeah. they. I mean, what can you say about it? A lot of, a lot of cities, they would have packed their bags a long time ago. Our fans have been great all year. Uh, all the families, the guys' families, the guys' wives, everybody just really, really helped out, gave us a lot of support. 
Do you think the airport will be big enough to hold the celebration? I doubt it. I doubt it. They'll be all the way down Lou Van Drive. Now, what were you thinking when Ridgeway lined up to kick that field goal? Give me your honest gut feeling at the time. Well, that's funny you asked that. I was just talking to Tom Burgess about that because all week they've been playing replays of the 72 Great Cup, and they, they talked about Ian Center's field goal and how time stood still. And that's what I was thinking about. You know, they, on TV they say time stood still, and, and I remember standing there thinking, man, he's right. I was standing there thinking, man, the, the clock ain't running. Time is standing still. And, boy, it's a hell of a feeling. Ray, congratulations on a Thank super you, game and a Thank great, great cup yeah. victory. Ken Austin, Austin has joined me now. <laughs> Ken, you've had a few minutes to digest this victory. Has it changed any from the time you talked to Scott out there? No, I don't, I don't know if it's really sunk in yet. This is just a, a great, great victory. I'm just really happy for everybody. Do you have any idea what this means to Saskatchewan? I've got a little bit of an idea, but um, I know it's been a long time coming for our fans, and our fans really deserve it. Do you think you have played a better game at quarterback? Well, I, I didn't think I was going to play too well there at the beginning, but uh, I knew we could get back to a you know, good game plan and have a chance to win. It took the offense a little time to get rolling. What was the problem? I don't know. I, I think I came out and tried to move the pocket a little bit too much and, and not run some of the stuff that I run well, and I just tried to uh, drop back a little bit more in the second quarter and throw the ball down for Any plans? No, I'm just uh, anxious to get back to Regina and celebrate. Go back to Nashville, where I'm from, and, and relax, and uh, have a good offseason. I want to say, if I can, I want to say hi to my family back in Nashville that didn't come up, and to uh, Joe in Dallas. I want to say hi to him, too. Ken, congratulations okay. on a great game and a super great cup victory. Thanks a lot. Ken Austin, the winning quarterback with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. We'll be back with more of our great cup coverage right after this. Back in the dressing room of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, where the moment of victory celebration continues as Jeff Fairholm and I get doused in champagne. And it is cold, it sure but it's is. a great feeling, isn't it? Not? I've always wanted to be doused with something, you know. I see everybody else winning championships. This is my first championship in anything I've ever done. And I just, I'm walking around in space. I don't know what to do. I'm just walking around and I'm just happy that we won. I'll, I'll think about it when I get back to Regina. Have you had a chance to talk to your dad? I have. You know, he just said, he just said, enjoy it and have some fun. And, you know, he's, he's as proud as can be. You know, he wanted us to win this game as much as we did. I said to Ray Elgard that a lot is going to be written and said about the way the defense played, but I thought the offense was superb. Well, we knew all we, it was a very, very simple game offensively. All we had to do, quite simply, was come out and beat man coverage and give our quarterback some time. We gave our quarterback some time, we beat man coverage, and we put some serious points on the board. It was that simple. There must have been times this year when you thought, there's no way I'm going to be here. Well, to be quite honest with you, there was. And we owe, uh, we owe a lot of credit to our coaching staff who, who instilled in our hearts and our minds that we could, we could be here. And we are going to be here. And we made a pact about seven weeks ago to guarantee ourselves to be here. And we, we promised ourselves we we're going to be here. We wore tape on our fingers during every game because we wanted that ring so bad. The money, the glory, everything else doesn't matter. I want that big sucker on my, on my finger. Was there a turning point in the season? That point, I think seven, seven weeks ago when, when we had Gary Greger come in, uh, you know, he just said, look, we're a different team. We're called the 89ers now. We, we didn't consider ourselves the Rough Riders. We called ourselves, we called ourselves the 1989 Great Cup champions. And here we are. Can Austin ever played a better game as far as you're concerned? Not in my two years that I've been here. He, I don't, he, he played super. He was calm, cool, collected in the huddle. When things got a little out of control late in the fourth quarter, he told us in his southern drawl to hush, and we hushed, and he just took control and let us down the field. All the credit goes to Kent. Is it too early, perhaps, and, and I don't want to put a jinx on it, to start talking dynasty, perhaps? Oh. This is a young club. This is a club that gained some valuable playoff experience today. I don't think you're ever going to see the word dynasty associated with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. We're a blue-collar team, just like Hamilton is. You never, you know, Hamilton's been winning for years, and you don't see the word a dynasty associated with them. So, you know, we could win for the next 10 years, and we still wouldn't be called a dynasty. People love us. We want to stay this way. You know, we had champagne, but it's beer that we look forward to. You know, we're not a champagne team. We're a beer-drinking team, and um, so are our fans. You know, I'm so happy for them. You got 20 seconds to say something to the fans in Saskatchewan. 
what can you say about our fans? They're fantastic. You know, I, I, I'm, they're so fantastic. I'm a little worried about what they're doing to my house right now because after we won last week, I had stuff all over my house. So, Shannon, take care of it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guy. Okay, now let's go up to Don and Ron. Well, Jeff, there may indeed be some surprises when you return home to Regina, but Ron Lancaster for both the victors and the vanquished, a game that will long be remembered. I tell you what, I don't know what can happen next year in the Grey Cup game. It seems like every year the game gets better, and uh, I, I don't know, that may have been the best game ever played. That's all we ever say after the Grey Cup. Last year, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, a 9-9 nine and nine team, a one-point victory over the B.C. Lions. Some thought that was an outstanding game. For the second consecutive year, a 9-9 nine and nine team wins it by a three-point margin. Well, that, I guess that tells you, you know, all you want to do is make the playoffs get hot late in the season, put it together in the playoffs, and end up playing in the greatest game ever seen. Many people will say that the 1958 Winnipeg victory over Hamilton was the best game ever played. Others will refer to the 61 overtime game, the 62 fog ball. You can go on and on. The 1987 victory by Edmonton over the uh, Toronto Argonauts under the dome in Vancouver on a late field goal by Jerry Couric. But this one, I think, tops them all. 43-40 Saskatchewan over Hamilton. Well, the momentum changed so many different times during the game. You know, 13-1 to at the end of the quarter, and then all of a sudden Saskatchewan caught fire. Hamilton stayed with them for a while, but Saskatchewan started to take control when we got into the third quarter. Austin was hot. The receivers were hot. Hamilton came back and made it close. It was just a heck of a football game, and, you know, when you play a football game, somebody's going to lose. Well, Ron, we've had a lot of fun describing games for our CBC television audiences this year. We've had three great Grey Cup games in succession. Let's do it all again next year for another encore. Okay, I, if, as long as it'll be the best game ever played. All right, Scott. <laughs> All right then, Don, and for the next 52 weeks at least, the Grey Cup belongs to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. A 23-year drought is over on the prairies, and few would argue this is a just reward for the riders and their fans. The moment has not been lost on either party, and you can be sure celebrations will continue for a while. And now the road to the 77th Grey Cup is over, and as always, it seemed filled with hurdles. It was yet another turbulent season for the CFL, one in which the survival of the CFL was called into question on more than one occasion. But this is nothing new. Crisis and this Canadian Football League seemed to go hand in hand. And as always, the league survived. Long enough now to hand out 77 Grey Cups. And in seven months' time, the road to the 78th begins. We hope you'll join us then on the CFL on CBC. And we thank you for being with us this year and showing us your support in the form of increased TV ratings. We are delighted you could spend this Grey Cup Sunday with us. Now on behalf of our entire production and technical crews who worked so hard the season long, the country over to bring you the CFL on CBC, we say thank you and good night from the Sky Dome, everybody.